Welcome. Next stop, the Fashion Bunker. Please sit back, relax and enjoy your journey.
Hello? Stream. How's it going? Hey Linda S. Hey for the bunch of hey Gloria. Hey Caleb. Hey Debbie. Hey Zane. Hey Ollie. Uh, hey Nat. Linda S. Duchess Marie. Penny Lane. Mead. I think it's pronounced Mead, right? Mead. Ramble on. Carla Green. Katrina. James. Uh, oh my God. Jack's back attack. Hey, hey girl. Nat. Who else is there? Oh my God. So many people. <laughs> Okay, I can see. Angela, Grace Chen, Linda S, Steph, Louis Protasio, Evelyn, Nancy, Jizzes. How's it going, everybody? It's echoing. Yes. Uh, at the moment, it's echoing. Everything is a little bit uh, in... Um, there's a rebuilding process happening at the moment, so... <laughs> We'll go, we'll go. A little new setup I'm working on, but don't you worry, the echo will dissipate. Pretty soon, sooner than you think. I am in heaven, Penny. Cheers, darlings. Mm. Mm. Y'all, oh my God, I lost the hair. Okay, where to begin? Listen, I'm gonna tell you all the deets in the pre-show this coming Saturday, which is exclusive to tier two members and patrons. So you still got time, a couple of days, to join, become a tier two patron or member, and then get all the deets about all the end of, um, end of uh, Mercury retrograde, and then kind of like the aftermath and all the stuff that's been going on in the fashion bunker, like it's been insane. Yes, I have also been traveling a lot, back and forth all over the place, but that's besides the point, like usually I, I can set up and, 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 and film. Granted, the luggage comes on time, but the luggage did come on time, but uh, I was changing internet provider and then internet was not there, really slow and then not there at all. Then the water stopped working. So there was like, at first no water at all, and there was only cold water. So I mean, there's a lot to talk about, but all of that kind of dramatic stuff we can talk about in the, uh, in the pre-show on Saturday. But I mean, we're gonna talk about the positive stuff in the mid-show, obviously. Mercury Retro got me good. So glad it's over. Sherry, it got us all good. I mean, I can speak only for myself. It was such a mess. Such a mess. I have a heck of a show though today for you, even though I'm in this echoing heavenly uh, kind of uh, environment for now. Um, so, so YouTube is also changing stuff around at the moment. So for example, I don't know if you guys, hey Nicole Pancakes, how's it going my love? Um, you're gonna notice that Super Chats are not functioning. So don't worry about that. The tips are still working, however, uh, even though the other stuff is not working. We're going through a process of change at the moment. Nothing to be concerned about, it's, it's all temporary. But like I said, here, if you wish to tip your host, it's right down there, thank you so much. Uh, Super Chats are not working at the moment, but that's a technical issue, nothing to do directly with us. So also what I wanted to say is, oh my gosh, hashtag not sponsored, but well, film up the live stream, film up the live stream and um, hashtag not sponsored, I got to show you something. Okay, so hashtag go best. I randomly, randomly on one of my kind of um, random kind of shopping moments when I was like thinking, oh my God, what am I going to do? Like, I can't even take a warm bath or shower. So I went like shopping for drinks, right? Non-alcoholic, of course, beverages. Um, but I enter a shop and I find this. I repeat, not sponsored. I bought this, but I was shook because Bubbles... Bubbles is involved, y'all, indirectly. I was really shook. I was shook because I found this. Now, you, you might, might ask yourselves, it's a Coca-Cola Coca can. Yes, it's a Coca-Cola can, but it's more than a Coca-Cola can because it is a Y3. Now, I don't think it has to do with Yoji. 
it's, it says Y3000. It's a Y3000 limited edition Coca-Cola Creations product, zero sugar. But what is really, really shocking to me is what it says at the bottom. At the bottom it says, it's the flavor of the future. Hold on. Futuristic flavor co-created with artificial intelligence. Now, let me, I don't know if you guys can see it here. Shook, okay? I was shook. I'm like, oh my God, bubbles? <laughs> bubbles? Bubbles co-created this? So it says co-created with artificial intelligence. Now, I believe, uh, so what I think they did here, this is really fascinating, and I have the, I have the Coca-Cola right here in this kind of new futuristic glass I got. It, it, I got the bubbles glass. You see, it's full of bubbles. See the connection? Um, okay, we got to talk about this flavor just for a second because it's so fashion. It's really fashion. I love the colors. They're totally my colors. The pink, the blue, the baby blue, and the little silver. You know what I mean? We go, go. But it's the flavor that got me. I think what they were doing with this was they were like telling, I guess they were, I don't know, chat GBT or something, or they were entering like a request, like develop a flavor given all of the flavor components or recipes that we have now. So something that is edible for human beings. Like factor into the future, let's say a hundred years from now, certain factors, what would the flavor of Coca-Cola be like in the future? And this is really interesting. First of all, I love it. It's so fashion, right, Sherry? I know. That's why I thought I have to talk to my people about this because this is like, honestly, honestly, fashion is dead to me. Like there's really, there's, everything is so sad nowadays. This to me, this is fashion, okay? This to me is like, wow, something new is happening. There's something modern going on. Like somebody's actually really experimenting with new stuff. Um, love the design of a can. Now, the flavor, I kid you not. If I think about the future, I can like, I can totally see how Coca-Cola could taste like this in the future. It, it tastes futuristic. Now, there's a little bit of tropical vibes in there. I want to say maybe maracuya is in there. A little bit of kind of cotton candy vibes. It's fruity. But then there's also that dark Coca-Cola flavor. It kind of rains it back in in the, in the dry down. You do get that Coke flavor as well. But then you also get like... It's, it's really, really happy. happy. It's, it's a, a happy, happy flavor, flavor. But it, it, you, you can't, can't quite pinpoint, pinpoint what it is. Um, cha, it's really good. But, but it's, it's a limited, limited edition, edition, so I think, I think it's, it's just like an experiment. It's, it's not going to be around for long. So, so if you, you do, do see this little gorgeous kind of lilac-y, pinky can, pink, blue. Futuristic, futuristic flavor, Jane. Jane. Yeah, Jane. Hi, Jane. Jane. Hey, Kudo. It literally says, futuristic flavored, co-created with artificial intelligence. Let me show that again for y'all. Nicole Pancake says, my apologies for my epic absence from the bunker. Life hath happeneth. I love and have missed you all. Oh, I love you too, Nicole. <laughs> we have to call, darling. Zane, you're totally right. Coke needs to reach out for a brand deal. And while we're talking about the future, listen, I'm going to show you a little something, something I'm going to use uh, for, for the tips, a theme of the live stream, but we're going to do an actual proper unboxing later on in the live stream. You're going to understand everything later throughout the show, but just for now, I want to show you, I can't resist. So we're going to unbox this twice, technically. Now it's going to be like a true unboxing and then the fake unboxing that <laughs> happened later, but I have ordered... Something, something from Spirit, Spirit Halloween, Halloween through a friend. Friend picked it. it. Long story short, finally got to me. I got this thing. <laughs> Very futuristic. We got Killer Clowns from Outer Space. If you know, you know one of my favorite 80s horror movies. It is the season of Halloween after all. And I got the cotton candy gun. Now you see how everything starts kind of, look at this 
everything is kind of, oh, let me take a little pizza. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am living for this. The colors are giving. So anyway, let me unbox this little baby because it is a killer claw. Hey, Joyful Remorse. Hey, Louie. Yeah, killer claws from outer space, the best. And then we got the cotton candy. It, it doesn't really make cotton candy, but okay. I am so, <laughs> all right. <clears throat> now, I'm gonna activate this uh, when we get the first uh, tip, if anybody wants to send one, and uh, then we're gonna trigger this little baby. It is um, mechanical. <laughs> And it is super fun. So, but uh, just letting you guys know, this is a beautiful, it's like a prop from the movie, but it is functional. And uh, that's, that's the gun from the killer clowns from outer space. Okay? <laughs> and it does work. So, so this is the thing we're gonna use uh, for popping cherries. <laughs> IYKYK. -Y -K. Mary Lux says, so, oh yay, so happy to join. I missed so many live sessions due to time difference. Hey sweetie, glad you could join in. Gloria says, ah, that Coke is called Y3000 and it has street streetwear merch to go with it. Oh, I didn't know about the streetwear merch. Well, for me, this is fashion enough. I don't need the, the streetwear merch. <gasps> Activated Dacob. Are you ready, Gloria? You are the first. <laughs> we are activating the cotton candy, I want to say brain, um, brain raise stunning gun. It was a virgin. It's a virgin no mo. Here goes. Are you ready? <clears throat> okay. I'm going to point it to you. <laughs> And you or maybe to the side first because you're gonna see it's gonna light up and all. I'm gonna point it straight to y'all. <laughs> and it, look at this. Yeah, baby. So this this little gorgeous uh, creature uh, from outer space is gonna be our uh, po a cherry popping uh, tip gun from now on. <laughs> At least in the ha Halloween season. Uh, oh my god, I need that. Right, Nicole? This is so cute. So anyway, this little beauty is uh, a special prop from the movie Killer Clowns from Outer Space. It's a replica prop, but uh, I just think it's gorgeous. So, I thought it fits perfectly into the fashion bunker. So there you go. We got that little moment. Um, <laughs> Zane says, is, th is this hinting at a costume? Well, I already am that clown. So I don't really need a costume. You know how people like haters, uh, you know, comment on me calling me a thing uh, or a clown or what, what have you. So technically, I'm already dressed for it, honey. But no. Um, not thinking of being Killer Clowns from Outer Space, I'm not so sure yet, actually. I know we all wanted to be Ursula, but then, like, when the movie came out, I'm like, eh. So, <laughs> Zane says, that's going to be a game next year. What is... It's going to be a game next year. Killer Clowns from Outer Space? Oh, what do you, what do you guys think? Hey, Diva, a bunch... <laughs> FOMO, Duchess Marie, Livin' Ferret, Ash Ate Paw, Me Too, I Want One. They're so cute. Hey, Nancy, Karnas. Hi, everybody. Thumb up the live stream. Also, here's a little shout out, you guys. I got a PR package. And uh, I, I did not ask for it. Somebody wrote me from... Uh, oh, Nicole Pancakes! Give me the cherry laser. Missed you so much, my Oh, my love. I missed you too, sweetie. Give me the cherry laser. Missed you so much. Bunker <clears throat> Nicole Pancakes, baby, baby, are you ready for the for the cotton candy stingray gun? <laughs> you hear it? <laughs> this is so. I 
mean, I love I love shit like this. Okay. Thank you so much, sweetie. Thank you, Nicole. Very, very generous. So, um, okay, I got another little gorgeous piece. I want to say, shout out to two girls uh, here on um, on YouTube. They're actually really big YouTubers. Uh, one is Safia, and the other lady is Simply Nail Logical. Do you guys know these two ladies? They're super sweet, and they sent me. Check this out. PR package. I got the Safia for Hollow Taco uh, nail polish. So I guess, I guess news is spreading that she has a beat mug. You know what I mean? <laughs> There's face, honey. This is face. Okay, I've been serving face for a while, and now I got uh, an email um, asking me would I like to receive this package. I did not need to show it to you guys. There was absolutely no contractual obligations involved. It was just like, no questions asked, like, hey, cute channel, do you want a package? I was like, thank you, yeah, I, I watch Simply Neological all the time, and then I watch Sophia in particular when she was traveling um, all the way through Japan doing the whole Lolita vibe. Sophia is a little bit more goth, you know? So, um, this is really, really cute, okay, because Kayla says, that is so cool. And it really is. Louis says, oh my God, you got share collab? I'm jealous I couldn't get the box. Share? Like, share? Like, snap out of it, share? I didn't know that share did a collab. Uh, Nicole says, oh, it's so good. Woohoo, cotton candy me. <laughs> Love you too, Nicole. Zane says, killer clowns is going to be a game. Similar to Texas Chainsaw. But oh, really? Okay, I'm looking forward to that. Her. Oh my God, you got her collab. Yes, I did. I did, Louis. I got the collab and uh, it's really cutely cut out. It's made in the US, by the way. So, uh, you know, it's not like made in China or weird places where you don't know about the product quality and blah, blah, blah. And you know how I love actually makeup. And um, so Simply Neological kind of focuses, well, the channel, you know, the lady's like obsessed with uh, holographic stuff. So that's why it's called Holograph like holographic, hollow. And taco is kind of a word game. She always says top coat, but very quickly. So kind of people started making fun and saying, are you saying taco or top coat? So that's why she called her brand hollow taco. And then we have this kind of um, book of spells type of vibe. It's like a book of spells for Halloween between Sophia and hollow taco. And inside it's super cute because Unlike the Chanel nail files that we all know were like $35 to $40 and we're like, we'll go, we'll go. You get a little nail file in this set, which is super cute. It's like pointy. Actually works well with the cuticle. So it is glass, right? So there's this little kind of extra giblet in there. Miniature bats to put on your nails. Super cute, like a bunch of tiny little minuscule, tiny, tiny, tiny bats. Uh, that uh, go on your nails and then, you know, you can kind of embed them into your nail polish. And then there's the whole set, all five of these colors. Only one is not really hollow, which is this one. Uh, the middle one, which is feeling fiendish. But my favorite one, I think, would be this one. I'm going to show you quickly. Can't take it out. Hollow friends. There it is. Um... I'm glad to support fellow YouTubers, okay? Because both these ladies are on YouTube. It's not like they technically need my support. They have millions of subscribers, but I'm really glad to support fellow YouTubers that make such beautiful creative stuff. So anyway, thanks for sending the box over. Like I said, there's no monetary endorsement here. And the set is actually already sold out, so it's not like I'm selling this to you. It's not even available anymore, so whatever. <laughs> but Check this one out. I'm kind of really feeling this vibe, okay? This is my favorite color, Spirit Fingers. Spirit Fingers, it's kind of like a gray holographic with a little bit of iridescent lilac-y vibes going on. I call this the cataract um, of nail polishes because it kind of looks like, you know, that kind of like gray haze that, that uh, people get on their eyes when they have cataracts. <laughs> so I call this the cataract, you know, in the best way possible. Um, 
Oh, Louis, you were watching Christine earlier? Yeah, Christine is so cool. So, you guys, Christine uh, is uh, the lady behind Holo Taco. So, Christine does Simply Nail Logical, and she does, like, live streams throughout the week. Sometimes she plays video games. Uh, sometimes she, she does a podcast. So, she's very kind of... And she's, and, and, uh, she's in Canada, so... Uh, shout out to Christine uh, from Simply Nail Logical. Thank you so much for the little goodies. And um, this is my favorite color. But then they also have like a darker one I can show you. The darkest one would be, I, I think I can't even pronounce this one out loud. Bat, B star, T-C-H. <laughs> Bat, B-T-C-H. <laughs> Oh, you can store tarot cards in that uh, box. It looks cool. Yes, you can. Technically, you can. You would have to empty it from the holders of the nail polish. So look at this thing. So it's it's a beautiful dark black, very Elvira. And then it has the holographic particles in there. So when you put it on the nail, it is actually really black with kind of like little stars sparkling in there. It's a very, very dark one. It's a very deep, deep color, almost like a night blue slash black. So that's bat B star TCH for all the bats out there. Yes. Yes, cataracts are handsome, Diva on a budget. Although I know. But it does give out like a cataract vibe, doesn't it? In a good way, in a good way. So this is my favorite color, by the way. So I'm not throwing shade. So anyway. Just showing you a couple of colors. That's and then there's a red one, and then there's like a more glittery one with more hollow, and then there's one that has no hollow at all. Uh, which Sophia said in I saw her talk about it. She said at one point this was kind of the one that she wanted first. Like when they were working on these, like this was the one she was immediately like, Yes, we gotta do this color. And this color is called Feeling uh Fiendish. Now, the thing about this one is it's kind of the base for their entire collection, I want to say. It's lavender. I don't know. I wouldn't call this lavender. Maybe like a mauve, a mauve lavender, mauve lilac, like a darker lilac mauve type of uh, vibe. So anyway, uh, that's the only one that doesn't have the holographic little glitter particles in them. So thank you. Thank you so much, Christine and Sophia, for this really, really, really cute um, package. I am very happy and I shall be using them at the moment. You might be asking yourselves, why aren't you wearing them at the moment? Because I'm trying to give my nails a break. Uh, I've noticed that um, in general, I have this tendency, like I really love to put on nail polish and then I like to see a chip. And so that means that I like the aesthetic of it when it starts chipping. Like I don't need to take it all off and then put it put it brand new on and you know and all that stuff. So what happens is I leave the nail polish on for way too long and it kind of suffocates my nail. And I have to learn to like take it off, let the nail breathe for a day, and then like maybe put on new nail polish again, or to work with like extra, you know, protective layers, protective coat, then the nail polish, then the top coat. But um, I don't do that. I like the more kind of goth slash punk aspect, especially of darker nail polishes. So I put them on and then as they chip, I just leave them on because I like, I like the aesthetic. But the problem is that then the nail polish stays too long on my nails and it kind of, um, it, my nails become softer. And I don't want to say I have a, an allergic reaction to nail polish, but like they become brittle, you know, and they, they crack. So I have to like give my nails a, a break a couple of weeks just to let them strengthen up a little bit before I can put nail polish on again. So I'm just letting you guys know that's why I'm not wearing nail polish at the moment. I'm just letting them breathe a little, strengthen a little, you know, gain their forces a little before I can uh, do the whole thing again with them. So just letting you know. Uh, hey, Curry K, I'm late. How did I miss the notification? Looking fabulous tonight, Jacob. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys. So that's how, let me take a sip of my future Coke. Uh, oh, Louie, no, I did not see the video. Well, she was throwing shade at luxury brands that do nail polish. I mean, you guys, that's a good point that Louie brings up because, like, nail polishes, you know, I love my Chanel nail polishes, but they're, like, almost, like, $50. 
I think they are with taxes, depending like where you're buying them. So between 40 and 50 bucks for a nail polish. Now, they used to cost $20, like they were $20, $25, uh, but now we're like approaching the $50 mark. And to be honest with you, it's not like the quality is the best nail polish in the world, but like, you know what I mean? $40, $50. And, and these um, Simply Nail Logical uh, nail polishes, they're, I think, $14 or $18 a bottle, something like that. So, and the quality is more substantial, right? You have like more effort that goes into actually pre creating this product because Christine's brand is focused on nail polishes. It's not like she's focusing on an entire range of perfumes, skincare, makeup for the face, for the body. You know what I mean? Like Chanel is, you know, or like Hermes is. Um, they have a lot more to live up to because, I mean, they're focusing on every single aspect of, of beauty and, and skincare. But if you have a brand that is specialized really and focuses really on one specific thing, being just nails, then you can imagine that that brand will probably have more time to invest in just producing good quality products aimed at that one specific target, which is nails, right? While Chanel, they do nails, they do lips, they do eyes, they do skin, they do perfumes. And so things kind of sometimes get lost, especially because think about it, a huge brand like Chanel or like Hermes, um, they have a big team. They have different departments that it's all split up in like, you know, they have like brand marketing. They're giving them the vibe like this season, we're going to have five launches. Uh, this is going to be the theme. Like, for example, Chanel did the Bizance theme, which is kind of like an intermediate limited launch. And then they have the solstice, the uh, autumn solstice launch, which is not a limited one. I mean, it is limited in terms of it's one season and then it's over, but distribution isn't limited. Then they have the Byzance where distribution was limited partially. And then within like one week away from each other, then they launched the 31 Rue Cambon lipsticks, which have extremely limited distribution but the product itself is not limited. And then they had the color codes launched. You, you guys, oh, losing stuff here yeah, from my table. You guys remember the color codes collection, which was like launched, what, like a month ago. This also had extremely limited distribution and was also limited in numbers. So they have all of these like kind of ideas that their teams are brainstorming together and then the brand marketing decides what goes where. But once these launches and the marketing is set in stone, there's no real changing anything up and you are in a time crunch to get shit done super fast. So if something is not really right, you can't, you don't really have the time left to tweak it. You know what I mean? Things get launched the way they are, which is not the case if you're a smaller business, because then you can really take the time to focus on something, give yourself the time to focus on one thing in particular, you might have two tops, three projects running simultaneously, but you don't have 30 projects running simultaneously, which allows you more time to dedicate to the quality of your product. Hey, five feet nothing, good morning. So anyway, just wanted to let you guys know. So this is kind of like throwing shade at bigger brands. Like I get it, it's, it's, it has to do with money for them and it has to do also with just a certain type of precision, repetition, packaging has to always look the same. There has to be, visuals have to be studied for their boutiques. Like how, how is the visual merchandising gonna look for this launch? Like what are we prioritizing? Which model are we gonna hire for the photos? Um, which makeup artist is gonna create the look with these colors and these palettes. There's like so much that they deal with. It almost feels like they're dealing more with the advertisement of the products than they're actually dealing with the products and the quality of the products. You know what I mean? I think when a brand is that big and popular, image is way more important for the brand and the actual product, because the product, it's all about the packaging. You know, it's all about how you deliver it to your customers. You can make something really basic, uh, 
appear like splendiferous, you know, and you can just really sell it to your people just because they love the brand, they, they trust the heritage of the name, but then like they get a basic product, but the basic product has the really cool packaging. It was a limited edition. You triggered the FOMO. They have to go to a certain place to buy the product. Maybe they get a special little freebie with the product. So you create this whole dream around a product that might not be really special uh, after all, but the story surrounding it is special. Uh, thanks, Five Feet Nothing. She gives a lot of shade, but in a very educational way, though. She has done Chanel Hermes, Jimmy Choo, and Off-White, among other brands. Hmm, there you go. Well, you know, we're not that far away from shade ourselves. Mm. Speaking of shade, let's do our first topic of the day. I want to talk to you. <laughs> oh, the shade. The frisbee of shade is in the hus. Uh, we're going to be talking about Hermes. And uh, also, while we're at it, why not also talk about Apple? So, hit it, bubbles. Oh, oh, five feet, nothing. Oh, thank you so much. Wait, wait let's not do the topic just yet then. Thank you for an awesome live. Thank you so much, sweetie. Let me... Since you've just tuned in, you don't know that we have a new cherry popping system. I have Killer Clowns from Outer Space cherry popping system. I'm going to pop your cherry special. Where is it? Ah, right. Yes, 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 yes. His bubbles just uh, uh, sent me the date. Five feet nothing. Don't get shocked. I know you didn't send this right now. You actually, the last live stream we did the outro as I was ending the live stream, the live stream was over, you sent this um, tip. And so now now Bubbles is playing the tip uh, because we missed playing the tip last time you sent uh, the tip. So now, you know what I mean? It's playing it now so that your tip doesn't get lost. All right. <laughs> Look at this thing. Too loud. Pop a cherry. Oh, did we pop it already? Yeah, we did. Okay. <laughs> There's that. So let's do the first topic. Uh, oh, Five Feet Nothing says I know what you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, Five Feet Nothing. I just wanted to let you know, like, we did not forget. Bubbles never forgets uh, a tip. Uh, even if the tip happens after a show is ending, then the tip will be played in the next show. Just randomly at this point now <laughs> and not earlier hey Trey B slay okay so let's do the shade moment hi everybody Jacob here welcome back to the frisbee of shade we're going to talk about hermes in the fashion bunker today my name is Jacob, and this <laughs> is the shade bunker so we're going to be talking hermes and we're going to be talking apple i coincidentally have a little product here from apple that i use a little uh, ipad mini by the way hashtag not sponsored but apple and hermes hmm it's a mess uh in particular right now as apple seems to be stopping the sale of leather uh, eye watches, what are they called? Smart watches, eye watches, I really, I never wear watches, wrist watches, so anyway, the eye watch, I guess, smart watches, what are they called? Well, you know that they had a collaboration, Hermes would make the wristbands in leather, more or less bougie, super sophisticated looking, you know, Hermes leathers are deemed uh, worldwide one of the best leathers ever um apple watches thank you linda by the way this video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience i live stream several times a week so come join the live chats and my co-chatters just helped me out here apple watch that's exactly what it is and uh you might see different categories in price the apple watch which series of apple watch it is like is it the newest model extra pimped up model, less pimped up model, and then you get to choose basically what sort of wristbands you want to wear, you want to purchase with your watch. Do you want them to be out of rubber, caoutchouc, leather, pleather, what have you? And one of the biggest luxurious collaborations that Apple 
used to do uh, was with Hermes. And Hermes would deliver that particular, you know, here you go, some pitches. Check this out, you know. It started off really the first year that they did this a couple of years ago. It was just a simple wristband and leather, yada, yada. And then they started expanding and making them more complicated and more special. I know that some of you have been saying in the chats that the fingers of this model look like alien fingers because they're very, very long. I mean, look how skinny the shadow is of this arm. Cha. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me shift to the side. Um, well, anyway, we'll go, we'll go. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Uh, but now, apparently and allegedly, and everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts, everything's alleged and just my opinion. Allegedly, Apple says we're no longer going to sell Hermes leather wristbands on our website. Now, uh, why they're doing this, so Apple apparently states that they are moving towards a fully sustainable economy for, for their own brand. Uh, they uh, are committed, so they say, by 2030 to be completely carbon-free emission-wise from their products by 2030. They have committed to that. Let's see if they have managed to, to get there. And so one of the issues is apparently that leather does not fall under what they want to focus on when it comes to sustainability because they do not find it really sustainable. So this is really interesting because, you know, as I was reading these uh, this news, um, I was thinking to myself, you know, we're talking Apple here, you guys, uh, and Apple has this sneaky way. Here's another example of an Hermes complicated buckle structure for the little leather, little belt thingy wristband to go with the watch. You see, I mean, you know, I can, it's just at this point, it's ridiculous how complex this is. It's, it's really. I really, to me, it's a joke. But anyway, I know some people love watches, so we'll go, we'll go. If you love them, you love them. But, you know, when it comes to Apple, I mean, Apple is the brand that delivers to us. Well, now they apparently stop, but I still have to purchase a new product to see. But, you know, they deliver the recharge, the, the cables that come with an iPad or the cables that come with your um laptop like your macbook pro or your macbook air they used to all have that plastic cable that you attach for it to charge and what happens with that rubbery material it degrades with time the soft makers and the plastic degrade and it just pops open and breaks it always happens super easy fix apple for years and years and years did not want to fix that making you have to buy a new cable every couple of months when yours breaks and it's a lot of money they earn a lot of money through those cables so apple is sketchy in my humble opinion what they do is super sketchy isn't it also weird that like my product like an app your iphone or your uh, ipad they're, they function super fast when they're brand new when you buy them. And then the second the new generation comes out, yours slows down all of a sudden, starts glitching. And then after a couple of years, Apple says, iOS cannot really be updated on your machine anymore, even though the machine is fully operational and functional. Like, it's really shady stuff. So, honest, I'm sorry, Apple. I love your design. I love the aesthetic. And I love how iOS is relatively easy to use. But I don't trust you with nothing personally, okay? I trust MS more than I trust Apple, just saying. So I was thinking to myself, Apple, for example, also has a deal with YouTube. And hi, welcome on YouTube, by the way. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Uh, push that subscription button and push the join button next to the subscription button. Become a member today and access to extra perks. Thumb up this video and you can also join me on Patreon. Super Deco all spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. Um, you know how when you, for example, send a super chat or any form of donation through to your favorite YouTubers out there, um, if you are sending a super chat or a tip through an Apple device, well, Apple wants a, a cut of that cake. So then YouTube basically gives you less 
isn't it interesting? This is why I always say, like, if you're sending, like, uh, any form of super chat or super thanks, if you're sending it through an Apple device, like, the percentages vary. So usually it's, like, uh, the content creator, I think, depending which country you're in, gets 45%. But you get even less percentage if the person sending that uh, super thanks is sending it through an Apple device because Apple and, um, and, and YouTube... Um, Clashing. Same applies to memberships. If you want to become a member of your favorite YouTuber and you join and become a member through an Apple device, Apple will take more money. So the content creator will earn less. I mean, Apple is the worst when it comes to, just my humble opinion. Uh, they are greedy like no nobody else. And I don't like their whole you know, talking about sustainability and let's create this gorgeous planet for everybody to live in. It's giving me major, like I, I sold my soul to the company store vibes where we're all going to end up living in these little villages and pods and nobody's going to own anything, but the company will own us. Vibes. I'm looking at you, George Orwell, uh, 1984. Read the book. But that's all neither here nor there. I thought to myself, it's is a money issue. I'm just speculating here. And I thought to myself, maybe Apple just wants more money for selling every piece. Because the way I see this, it's a collaboration. Whenever Apple sells one of these Hermes versions of their watches, Hermes gets a cut. And Apple gets a cut. Maybe Apple wants more money, <laughs> you know? Because Officially, they're saying we're parting ways from Hermes. We're not selling Hermes uh, straps on our website anymore because it's not sustainable. Period. But at the same time, what is Hermes doing? Hermes is still selling the leather um, straps on their website and in their stores. So this means that Hermes is still, has still decided to keep producing these products for the Apple Watches, and which means that for every sale they make, they have to give a percentage to Apple, promoting Apple in Hermes boutiques, basically, while doing so, while at the same time Apple does not counter the promotion does not promote Hermes back because they will not be selling Hermes products on their website. Now, if you look at the photo that I showed you before, if we go back one step, it's not like Hermes only does leather. They also did here, recyclable materials. There's the Hermes logo. So that excuse of like Hermes not being so sustainable for Apple standards, um, yeah, no, no, because they were not just doing leather. They were also doing plastics, recyclable plastics for that matter, probably. You know what I mean? So there's more to this story, I personally believe, than what the media is reporting. Now, you know me, I, just, I don't trust the media anymore. And I say this all the time, and I don't trust the news either and television. And some of you come for me and say, oh, no, no, don't say that. That's not true. Girl, I would love to trust the media and the news outlets, but I've just been burned way too many times for me to just trust them. There's way too many interests in the back running around and you don't know who's paid by who and whose interests are important to who and which sponsor wants what. So no. And when I read the, the news about Apple cutting ways with Hermes just because of sustainability? I'm like, never. In a million years would I believe that the reason is just sustainability. I'm sorry. Like, try to sell, sell, that, sell that story to somebody else. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Um, and like I said, if you want to keep buying the Hermes wristbands, yeah, just go to Hermes. They're still selling them. Just Apple won't be selling them anymore. Allegedly. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below. And until next time, don't forget to never give up on love. Bye! So yeah, there was one more picture I could have showed you, but whatever. I was just like, at this point, we'll go, we'll go. I mean, you know what I mean? Anyway, ridiculous, darling, ridiculous.
Caleb says, oh, I'll never not have an iPhone or an Apple Watch, but I'll admit the company's frustrating. And to stop using leather, Apple's regular leather wasn't that great. That too. And another thing, I can't believe like they really went with this, you guys, but like Apple is like, um, what is this thing called? Is this a USB-C cable? This is a USB-C cable. Sorry, I really, I don't, I, I so don't give an F about all of this, but I have to because I'm technically dealing with everything. But they used to have uh, their exclusive connectors, which were called Fire, what were they called? Fire something, what were they called? And then, uh, what are they called? Oh, hey, Lem Morons. Hey, April Spread. How's it going, guys? Sorry for the echo. I'm rebuilding something. Um, what was it called, you guys? The lightning cable. Thanks, Caleb. The lightning cable. Now, Europe made it law that you can't make yourself connectivity cannot be exclusive just to your brand. So Apple was forced to switch to the USB-C because of, thank God, for better uh, consumer protection laws in Europe than in America. So Apple was forced to switch to this, so they switched worldwide. Now they're selling you the USB-C cable, Apple, saying that they decided, that it was like their idea to update their devices to USB-C. You see what I mean? It's like these little things, these little ways of communicating that just show you how dodgy, um, how dodgy marketing can be. And also just like, just like you said, Caleb, I'm also going to be that person. I'm always going to have my Apple devices. I'm that sucker. I am that sucker. I'll always have my iPad mini or regular iPad. I'm always going to have uh, a Mac, an Apple, a laptop computer of whatever kind. I'm looking into getting a MacBook Air next, but that's neither here nor there. But like, they're shady. And then they make their products not accessible on the inside. You know, when you buy a PC, you can unscrew it. You can take every compartment of the PC out, exchange it. If something breaks, you can switch stuff around. Apple makes sure to seal off that computer so you cannot open it. You cannot take anything out. You cannot exchange any components. You know what I mean? That's dodgy business, in my opinion. That like literally means like, no, buy a new one, buy a new computer every year. Like if something, if there's a little tiny minor issue with, with the computer you bought from us now, after one year, the warranty expires. I know you can extend it, but that they earn a lot of money with extension as well. Like once that's expired, buy a new one. Like, okay, so Apple, so if you're telling me you're being so sustainable, you're not going to be working with Hermes anymore because they do leather and that's not sustainable. Aha, uh -huh. interesting. So why do you want us to keep buying new computers every year, or every two years from you? Why aren't you more sustainable in that? Why don't you become sustainable and allow us to exchange components? Why do I have to buy a completely new computer every time there's a tiny minor glitch with the one I just bought a year ago? You see what I mean? The math doesn't math. The math just doesn't math for me. I find it really, really, really sketchy. Their whole business module, how they work with their clients and how they treat their customers. I'm sorry, just my opinion. You know what I mean? Just my opinion, but that's my opinion. <laughs> The swimsuit cables are so wasteful, and for Apple to hold out on giving users USB-C only in 2023 is a literally criminal, says April Spritz. Oh, that's why they did it. Never had an Apple, so I didn't know why or when they switched. The shade be shading. I agree, but it's all about money to them, and that's it. Right, pal. So, like, they should just be honest about it. Just say you want money. Don't make, you know, they do a new presentation of the new model, which looks just like the old model. And we've innovated this, we've innovated that. When you innovated what, girl? You innovated what? PCs are already like 20 light years ahead of you. But then they do this shtick with us. They charge you more and more. Do you remember that one year when they outpriced themselves? And they were like, uh, the iPhone was like over a thousand bucks. The first iPhone that like went over a thousand dollars, nobody was buying it. And then they had to backtrack. Do you remember? And I was like saying back then, it was like a year or two ago. And I said to myself, is Chanel ever going to reach that? Like, is Chanel ever going to hit that point when they are at, when they have to backtrack and like lower the prices? Because Apple had to. 
people, they got a huge backlash that one year. Do you guys remember when they released that, that iPhone, iPhone that went, went over a thousand bucks? People were not having it. And, and then, then they, they were like, like oopsie. Oh, yeah. But anyway, that's, that's Apple for you. So, and we know it. Like, we're not stupid. We know that it's all about the money. So, like, please, like, don't greenwash it. Don't make it sound like a sustainable girl. Ah. Vivi la vivere, as they say. Now, ciao, my fro. Yeah, the echo, I know it's, um, I'm changing the setup five feet nothing. It's going to change again. I'm, I, um, I need to pad everything. <laughs> I need to. There's a bit of an echo. I'm in a bigger, bigger uh, room, so I need to kind of pad everything. I'm working on the padding, you guys. Bear with me. Padding is super expensive. So for now, I've padded the floor. Uh, I need to pad three walls and a ceiling. So um, padding three walls and a ceiling is gonna cost me... A lot. Uh, we're, we're talking about $1,500. Um, and until then, I will be echoey. So I'm, I'm slowly building the padding there. Now you know. Yeah, acoustic panels. Oh, pow. For sure, they need to make better cameras. For sure. Like, they're so back with their cameras it's insane leo says hey Jacob. hi leo just want to let you know that hermes watch bands are still available on apple's website yes but they've announced that they're cutting they're, they're parting ways they're selling out whatever stock they have and then uh they're gonna stop but hermes is gonna continue that's the news i think it adds to the vibe when talking about dystopian things i like it oh thanks cassandra <laughs> oh the echo stopped I mean, it comes and goes, maybe I should talk a little bit lower, then it's going to echo less. I don't know if you're going to hear me, though. Hey, Christine, surprisingly, the echo just disappeared. Oh, maybe it's the ghosts of Halloween. I think this echo proves my suspicions that the bunker is in a cave <laughs> on an island a la Batman. Yes, and I do fly out of it. I turn into a bat every time I leave the cave because obviously I am a vampire. It makes total sense. We'll go, we'll go, you know. But I'm a sucker for Apple products. Me too, Linda. Just like I'm a sucker for Chanel products. Chanel and Apple, that's a match made in heaven. I think those two, business-wise, Apple and Chanel they should marry each other because they're both geniuses when it comes to milking the client. Chanel and Apple, both are genius when it comes to milking the client. We'll go, we'll go. Okay. Now, Christine says, side note, pink is an excellent color on you. Looks fantastic. Oh, thank you so much. The eyeshadow is a little bit purpley. Then I have gold here. And then I have Malice, which is, which is a pink shade, blush all the way here. And then I got that lilac, lila pink on my lips and Angel, which is another pink hue on my lips. So I'm working with pink and purpley hues on the face. And then we got the Get Your Merch, the Live and Ferret. <laughs> Live and Ferret merch, y'all. So I'm wearing my pink Live and Ferret t-shirt which was lost for like over a week. Do you guys remember? It was like almost two weeks. It was lost in my suitcase that was never arriving. But thankfully when it arrived, nothing was stolen. Maybe Apple will work with Chanel, hence dropping Hermes. Ooh, Linda, the speculations. Yeah, it's Chanel plus Apple. Chanapple. <laughs> Schnapple. That's very share. Schnapple. Of it. Yeah, Schnapple. So uh, what's, what's the next product you're going to be purchasing? Schnapple. <laughs> A Schnapple computer. It's covered in tweed. <laughs> Chapel. Yeah, Debbie, take us to church. Chanel and Apple. Chapel. Um, maybe about... I mean... Ooh, I saw a video, you guys. Now listen, I get a lot of intel sent to me uh, 
via email and all different social media uh, ways. I can tell you this much. Um, I cannot show you everything because sometimes people send me videos and you know who you are and thank you so much for sending them to me because it's good to keep sending it to me even if I cannot share everything here. Hey Lady Bradface, how's it going sweetie? I cannot show everything here because a lot of the intel that I get sent is from, you know, private chats, private groups, uh, fashion groups, bag groups, luxury groups. So these are, this is content that people make to kind of share with other fellow members of their private group. Like if they have issues with products, if they have issues with a brand, or sometimes also to share positive stuff. I see my nose is starting to oil up. Let me just touch up my makeup quickly. And so I receive a lot of these videos and photos and texts and they are very concerning. Uh, like they're disconcerting, I wanna say. Like, because shit going down, okay? I saw a video uh, that one of you sent me and thank you know who you are and I'm not gonna of course reveal your name I'm gonna keep you private unless you want your name revealed obviously but you sent me a video from a private chat group on luxury fashion Chanel <laughs> y'all I I am shook because so basically I can tell you what the video shows I have the receipts, I just can't show them to you. But so basically a lady bought a Chanel 22 bag in silver. And that one was, I think, a season ago or like two seasons ago. It was in, it was coated in, it was like a shark color. You know what I mean? It was like a metallic silver Chanel 22 bag with gold hardware. It looks really beautiful. And she's filming it in the boutique. She took her bag to the Chanel boutique, asking them to fix it. Chanel! Allegedly everything, obviously. And uh, and so she's complaining in this group saying, hey, Chanel said we can't do anything about it, but we know how Chanel is. That's neither here nor there. The problem is this bag was peeling so bad. I mean, we're talking so bad. So the upper part of the bag where the chain runs underneath the leather and when you kind of pull the, the strap, you know how the bag kind of folds it. We're talking about the 22 bag. So the leather wrinkles up at the top of the chain. You know what I'm talking about, right? And let me just check from the Chanel website. I can just like take a, a random photo of a Chanel 22 bag so you guys know. For those of you who don't know what a Chanel 22 bag is, because not everybody knows, obviously. Um, the bag was in shreds. Shreds, I mean, of course Chanel is watching. You know what, I'm going on the Chanel website now, and they say, our site is temporarily down for maintenance. <laughs> They're not letting me access the Chanel website. That's okay, Chanel, I can just, Find your pictures online. Can you believe this? Right now, Chanel is like, we'll go, we'll go, girl, we'll go, we'll go. That's okay, Chanel, because internet never forgets, darling. And so I have here a photo from the Chanel website. So it falls under fair use. We can show this one. And give me just a second, y'all. I'm saving the picture. Okay. Here's a black one, just for, for your reference. This is a Chanel 22 bag. Now envision the black leather. This is uh, leather, allegedly. And um, they call it a shiny calfskin leather. And this one is treated in this shiny black color, but they also have them in metallics, right? So envision this one in silver metallic calfskin with a silver finish. So this lady, Sent, uh, films a video of herself in the Chanel boutique. She, she brought her bag back, the silver one, 
And here, all of this part of the bag, where the leather kind of wrinkles up as you pull the chain, right? All of the silver is falling off. And we're talking, it's in shreds. It's not little tiny cuts or slits in, in the top coat. No, 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 no. We're talking chunks. <laughs> It's like insane. It's like you can pull it, you can peel it off like tape. I was shocked. Like, I know that the quality of the one that I had in red was bad and it was peeling, but I never thought in a million years that the entire surface would just, you know, just peel it off. And then she kind of pans with the camera. She pans to the lower parts of the bag. So in several parts of the bag, cracks are showing, are starting to appear. Y'all, this is a $6,000 bag, okay? Actually, now it's at 7,000, I think, depending on what size you buy. Uh, don't do this at home, you guys. I'm just very itchy here, and I'm not trying to. I'm a grown up and I'm a professional. This is how you do it if you don't want to get your makeup off. You just take an object and you just press the itchy point without scratching off the makeup. Don't do this at home, okay? It's YouTube, we gotta stay safe. So I'm looking at it and the lady is like, yeah, like let everybody know, raise awareness, you know, because like you're one of the rare people that actually still talks about these issues. Nobody else really cares on Instagram or on YouTube to, to talk about quality uh, of these brands anymore. You know, everybody's keeping it very hush-hush, very silent, which is really saddening to me. Shout out to Mel in Melbourne, by the way. Another one staying quite silent, I would think. Allegedly. I also got intel telling me that Mel posted two luxury unboxing videos um, since the whole Cosette scandal. And apparently not addressing Cosette yet. Maybe she did and I'm not aware. If so, my apologies. Otherwise, what gives, Mim? What gives, Madam Mim? What gives, Madam Mim? So, now people come for me then, you know, the purse form saying, like, oh my God, blah, 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 blah. Like, you're not unboxing a luxury bag every day, so how dare you even talk about luxury, honey? Here's the deal. I have all the luxury bags I want. I already have them. I went through the whole process, the excitement of buying and buying and unboxing and buying and buying more. And like at a, at a certain point, you you really, literally have it all. Mine is the Birkin. But you just buckle up, buckle up, because that's a whole, that's a story for another day. But like you get what you love. I'm the type of person who, yes, I can fall very easily victim to my own addictions. Like I can very easily be that person that has to buy three copies of the same thing. One to keep in box, one in pristine condition for photos and one to use. Like I am that person, okay? I'm not sitting here telling I'm holier than thou. I have fallen victim to FOMO many a times. I have, um, I have fallen victim to brand marketing schemes. Um, but you know what, like I'm getting older and I'm also learning and I'm at a point in my life where I think to myself, well, I really love the stuff I have, I really do. And I don't sell the stuff I have, you know, I, I have these huge archives which kind of suffocate me at a certain point because it's a lot, but I love rediscovering things in my archives and I love then being able to showcase them to you. You know, like, I don't know, some archival piece from 30 years ago, I take it out of my archives and I show it to you guys. I'm like, look, this is actually, you know what I mean? I don't just talk about these luxury products. I actually have inspected them. I have studied them. I have them in my archives and I don't let go of them because I need them as references to keep studying. So in a way, I think I should be considered more like a scholar of, of fashion and luxury rather than your typical luxury consumer slash influencer on, on YouTube. I'm not that person. I'm not going to be sitting here telling you, here's a $50,000 haul of, of me at Louis Vuitton. That's ridiculous. I find that cringe. I, I would never... First of all, 
I don't, I really don't care. But second of all, like, how, how will I ever find the time to enjoy these pieces? If, you know what I mean? If, if I'm going to just buy them in bulk, what is it? Costco all of a sudden? Well, as we know, Costco is selling luxury products as well, but it's about the buying in bulk uh, part. And here I am rambling. We're, we're get to the point, Jacob. So yeah, the Fopi as well, Nat. Yeah. Oh, hey, Didi Bean. How's it going? How's it going, sweetie? Uh, Grace Chen, but you know, as we say, Cosette is still innocent until proven guilty. I suppose that's what Mim thinking, so ignoring these issues. Yeah, you're ignoring these issues, but a lot of your viewers watched your video where you promoted Cosette and they bought bags because you promoted Cosette and now they're worried they won't be getting their money back after they have sent their Cosette purchased bags to uh, third-party authenticator websites or web or authenticators and those bags have allegedly returned deemed non-authentic. Now these people are trying to get their money back. They bought these bags because you promoted this uh, luxury outlet. So legally you might not be responsible, but morally, I think you are. I think you are responsible morally. I'm sorry for just stating the obvious here, but to each their own, um, you know. I wish everybody all the best and all the luck in the world, but girl, uh, listen, when shit hits the fan, uh, address it. You know what I mean? Hey, Velasquez. Hey, Velasquez, how's it going? Waking up with your live. Good morning. CM Tube, I do see you as a scholar rather than regular consumer. Thank you, CM Tube. And this is literally what I am. I love studying these things, okay? I love analyzing them. I love understanding what is the direction in which we're going. Sure, certain products really excite me, make me really giddy, like happy to touch, to feel, to understand how the design works, like exceptionally giddy. Other objects are more whimsical. Like, for example, the Frisbee, the Hermes Frisbee. I knew that this was going to be a great prop for my channel, okay? When I bought the Hermes Frisbee, I was like, this is really whimsical. It's a novelty piece. It's not like, y'all, it, y'all. It's not like I'm standing in my, in my garden. Oh, Tim Park! Hey, sweetie, thank you so much. Tim Park donated C$. Hey, Jacob, great content today. Always try to catch your lives, but been a little busy. Keep up with the good work. Thank you so much, Tim Park. And are you ready for Killer Clowns from Outer Space Cherry Poppin' that we're doing now in the Halloween season? Hit it, Bubbles. Love it. Thank you so much, sweetie. And um, hey, Jocelyn. Hi, Jacob. To my rescue, I'm feeling miserable and in pain at the moment. Had a major dental surgery. So happy to have you, your company now to help me get through. Oh, sweetie, Jocelyn. Do not go over the prescribed amount of drugs your dentist has given you. That's what I, always, I never go over. But I always take the maximum that was allowed to me. <laughs> after major dental stuff. So I know the pain you're going through, sweetie. So I'm feeling with you, sending you good positive vibes and a speedy healing energy. There you go. Yes, Tim Park, we got the killer class from outer space gun. So as I was saying, like this is a novelty piece. Now you're not gonna see me in my garden playing Frisbee with my dogs, you know, a dog I don't have. In my mind, I have a dog, but anyway. So, um, Yes, I do use it sometimes as a plate for snacks. I think it's really bougie in the best of ways. But like, we'll go, we'll go. You know what I mean? It's like really fun to do the frisbee of shame. You know, we do that stuff uh, in the bunker and it's just a, it's a novelty piece. So there are those pieces that I buy for the sake of the show for the fashion bunker. Not to show off that I have a freaking frisbee from Hermes. Give me a break. But it's a really whimsical piece, you know what I mean? And then there are those pieces, those luxury pieces that I buy that are really, for my lifestyle, super practical. Super practi practical and for how I use them, virtually indestructible. And you know what I'm gonna show you. I've shown them a thousand billion times, but it's, it's my Louis little giblets. These things, 
And again, then people come to me through and say, no, you buy accessories. Girl, ugh, luxury is not always about the money, you know? It, it isn't. It's not about having to prove to your viewers constantly that you can afford shit. I'm way too old to have that need in me, okay? I, I've like I've outgrown the teenage years where you gotta prove yourself to your social group that you can. I I really don't need I I don't need to prove anything to anybody. I use this on a daily basis, right? And my little makeup pouches, which are packing cubes, but they're makeup pouches. I use them all the time, every day, every day, every single day. So there's that type of luxury that I buy because I also know that they're really, and you see, I don't really care. I can squish it, I can do whatever I want with this stuff and it always comes back, doesn't break. Virtually indestructible for how I use it. Of course, if you melt it, it's gonna break. But what I'm trying to say is there's that luxury as well. Those things that I buy that I know are gonna last me really, really a long time. And, uh, and then there's also that luxury that is like for special occasions. And I've noticed uh, thumb up the live stream. By the way, we only got 90 likes, you guys. Come on. I'm finally back. Thumb up the live stream. And then I've noticed, like, there's Chanel, for example. Okay. As much as I love Chanel, Chanel bags are the most, um, I want to say, high maintenance luxury products to, to use when you're wearing them. Like, when you're wearing a Chanel bag out and about, the bag is wearing you. I don't mean this necessarily just like, oh, nobody sees you anymore, everybody just sees the bag. That's not what I'm saying, although in some cases that is the case. But what I'm saying is the bag is wearing you because you gotta be careful. That bag, is it scratches easily, it can break easily, you can bump into stuff and hit that little knob, the turn lock of the Mademoiselle turn lock or the 255 turn lock easily. The chain can tug on your hair. Like you gotta be very meticulously, dare I say, anal about how you're using your Chanel bag when you're out and about. And it's really, really irritating. Uh, it's not a user-friendly bag. Okay, so you wear Chanel to a special occasion, to a gallery opening, a, th a theater, you know, dinner, whatever. At dinner, you gotta be careful to always have the bag on your lap, not on the, you don't want anybody to steal it. It's really a hassle. Like Chanel bags like are really annoying because you have to, it's all about the bag. You gotta baby the bag, okay? When you're out and about with a Chanel bag, you gotta baby the bag, period. And sometimes I'm in the mood to baby my bag and then that's okay, but sometimes I'm just not. So I've reached a point of Chanel bags in my collection where I'm like, okay, I have a ton of them and it's, we're done. We're done. Like, I, I don't want a baby anymore. You know what I mean? Like, it's okay. I have the ones I love and I have them. Great. Let's see how long they're going to last me. You know what I mean? Good for me. Thank goodness I was able to uh, afford them when they were like half the price. And now we move on. But now I have the knowledge and this is what these people that come for me and say, you're not buying a new bag every week, so how dare you talk about luxury? What they forget is that I now, because I have all these products, I am gathering more and more knowledge about them because I'm living with them. So the type of information that I can share with you about these products is way more substantial and thought through and, and deep and also honest than somebody who's going to buy the bag today, unbox it, and then sell it next week. Because, you know, they took their pictures on Instagram, they wanna buy a new bag, they can't afford it, so they're gonna sell the one they bought. With that money, they're gonna buy a new one. Well, I'm sorry, but that's just, that, that's just not me. I'm not gonna be that unsustainable, you know what I mean? No, I'm gonna buy what I love. I'm not gonna buy something just for the clout. And also, even though I can afford it, just because I can afford it doesn't mean that I have to buy it. Why? Why? I really want to enjoy the time with the beautiful things I already have. And this brings me to the next topic. Um, the segue is kind of interesting because it has to do with reselling. 
and luxury reselling and how dangerous luxury reselling can be and what we can learn from this is to maybe purchase more wisely, purchase what we really want, not what we think we want because we fell, we fall for the FOMO. And you want to be truly more sustainable, follow what Vivian Westwood always says. Buy less, choose well, make it last. Quit purchasing for the sake of reselling the next day after you've taken your selfie. That's ridiculous. Jocelyn says, I never understood that. It's about buying luxury to last, so you don't have to buy every week. Exactly. You really don't. Um, and Linda, good for you for being super rough with your Louis. If You know what I mean? It's a heavy-duty product. It's a, it's, Louis Vuitton was originally created as luxury travel. These are products that are made to withstand the tests of travel. That's a big deal. So enjoy it. Carolee says, I have a boy bag from the 2013 Mitiada collection and trying to track down more information on the leathers. Do you know of any resources of previous collections? Chanel was not helpful. Um, yeah, no, I don't have information about the specific leathers because Chanel is just going to tell you either lambskin, calfskin, sometimes they do goat skin, and then they do the grained Calfskin, which is which we collectors call caviar leather. Of course, it's not made of fish caviar. It has nothing to do with fish. And then back in 2013, Chanel was still doing exotic leathers. They stopped making exotics in 2019. So in 2013, you will probably also see quite a few boy bags made in lizard, python, other reptile, uh, crocodile, probably alligator, maybe even. Usually it's just croc, not alligator, though. And then, of course, all of your tweeds, uh, boucles, uh, jersey materials mixed in with leather. You're going to see a lot of those as well in the early 10s uh, of Chanel. And um, then from 2019, you're not going to see the exotics anymore. Then you're going to see the textile fabrics, and you're going to see lambskin, and you're going to see... Uh, lambskin and calf and I think after 2019 you're barely gonna see any goat skin with the boy bags I, I'm probably not any anymore not that I know of maybe they did do some goat skin after 2019 for the boy bags but not that I can remember maybe in 2020 when they first released the 19 the Chanel 19 when the 19 was first released uh, the first leather ones were in goat skin super robust and it made sense but then Chanel switched that really quickly to lamb skin and calf skin so maybe in 2020 when they launched the 19 bag sorry in 2019 fall winter 2019 uh in fall winter 2019 when they launched the 19 bag that first leather version was in goat skin and i think because of all of the hides that they purchased of goat they probably had a lot you know what i mean so i, I would think that they made more than just the 19 bag in goat skin that year i do remember around about 2019 2020 they also made the 255 mini in neon leathers neon colored leathers and those neon leathers were goat skin as well i remember an orange one specifically with silver hardware it was in goat skin mini 255 the quilted area is aged calf skin like the reissue but the body is a de-stressed leather but not sure if it's calf skin or goat skin well, usually with goat skin, you see it, uh, Carrie Lee. Uh, goat skin has um, kind of, I want to say like a pimply grain. It's like uneven. It's like earth. It's like soil that's been kind of turned around and then pressed. And then it has those like really bumpy, veiny textures. Uh, that's usually goat skin if it's not overly treated. It looks quite different from the de-stressed calfskin that you're talking about here the reissue the de-stressed calfskin is literally a calfskin that uh, chanel has a, sp a specific technique that they use for um, their de-stressed calfskin 
vintage optic. So what they do is uh, these hides, they are placed in these machines that stretch the hides really far apart and then they let go. And they stretch again and then they let go, they stretch again. And through that process, uh, the hide gains those veiny kind of crimply textures that makes it look like it's aged. It's a process, it takes time, and you're gonna notice that sometimes they have more time to do it properly. Sometimes, I don't know where they source their leathers from, sometimes it's not that properly done. Some 255 bags are gonna have a relatively flat surface, tiny veins showing through, miniature wrinkling, and some that are properly done are really gonna have those major, major structural lines uh, within the this aged look of the calf skin, and that's because they've actually invested enough time to create the wrinkly effect of the calf. And I'm getting too technical here, but anyway, sorry, we're losing viewers. Thumb up the live stream, and let's get to the next topic. And the next topic, uh, so thumb up the live stream, will ya? It's like pulling teeth getting thumbs up here. Oh, thanks, Five Feet Nothing. You're always very kind. Thank you. That's really interesting. I always wondered how Chanel distresses their leather. Thank you. You're welcome. 111 likes. Let's get to 150, shall we? I know I skipped a week of live streaming and it seems like the channel is dead. <laughs> Nobody's watching. <laughs> uh, but this is also an interesting lesson to be learned. YouTube always says, no, go on a break. I've been live streaming for like four years straight without any holiday. And now because technical issues, I had to skip a week and now like the views are down by half. Just letting you know, YouTube, your algorithm could zoo better, okay? <laughs> it's like making us work double because if we don't work, then YouTube is like, no, you're not gonna get the views then. So, um, so there's that. Uh, Claudia B says, Jacob, hello. Hi, Claudia, Claudia from B. I wanted to know your opinion on the new Chanel sunglasses that resemble the camellia flower. Uh, that's what they told me at my boutique. The sunglass case has a beautiful flower. I have from 2018 or 2019, the camellia Chanel sunglasses, but which ones are you talking about? <gasps> Did I miss something? Did Chanel just release new sunglasses that I have to buy? Oh no, the FOMO. Hold on, before we do the next topic, uh-oh. Oh wait, but Chanel just told me their website is, is off. Y'all, I can't access the Chanel website. It's, it's telling me that uh, our site is temporarily down for maintenance. Are you telling me they have a new version? Of, because yeah, the, the entire fall winter collection is all about the camellia the fashion collection. So yeah, I, I could see how they would do camellia sunglasses. Oh my God, we'll go, we'll go. Claudia, uh, no, the best way would be to send me photos, uh, superdacob at gmail.com. Oh, the ones from the runway, wait, hold on, I'm seeing here. Are they like round and they just have like a metal wire going around like petals? Yeah, those I don't like. If, if those are the ones you're talking about. But you can send me photos if you got photos from the boutique. Fabulous. Send them to Story Bold Camellia. A nod to the codes of Chanel. These frames are highlighted by a delicate thread of metal that suggests the shape of a camellia. The winter flower at the heart of the fall winter 23-24 ready to wear collection and adorned with a refined double C. Yeah, no, I don't like them at all. I think they're really tacky. I mean, it's like a hippie vibe, but like you can get better hippie glass. But anyway, I don't know if those are the ones you're talking about. Send me the photo and let me know if I'm allowed to show them to the viewers. Send me a photo at superdacob at gmail.com. That's the best way to send me all information. And then um, superdacob, all spelled together, superdacob at gmail.com. So send me the photos you have and let me know if I'm allowed to use them here to show them to everybody. And then we can see if those are the ones you're talking about. I especially wanna see how the box for the glasses looks like. Daria says, their website works for me right now. I'm FOMOing too. Daria. <laughs> Champagne O'Clock, good morning from Prague. Fantastic content, please never stop. Oh man, Champagne O'Clock, I love your username. Thank you so much. Wait, you know what? If I switch to maybe Australia, 
or something. Chanel dot. Wait, how does the Chanel Australia go? Chanel dot com dot. A U S or something like that. Hey, good afternoon, Stanley. Down end up. AU dot AU. Okay, so dot com dot AU. No, it says it doesn't exist under that. Dot com dot AU doesn't exist. We'll go, we'll go. Cha. Why is it not? It's like literally, did Chanel finally block me on their website? Um, no, it doesn't want to open it. Oh, I need a VPN. Ugh. Hey, Patricia, Patricia Casey, how's it going? Jocelyn, could be. Hmm. Oh, you sent the email? All right, let me check. Oh, wait a minute now. Okay, now, wait, 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 wait. I just saw the metal version. Now I'm seeing the acetate version. Ooh, okay, FOMO. Ooh, ooh, mm -mm, mm -mm. Why? Okay, let me save the pictures. I'm gonna show them to you. Am I allowed to show them, Dari? Uh, Dari? Wait, who sent it to me? Claudia. Am I allowed to show them? Cause like, can we talk? Oh, they're cute. Uh, why? Let me save the images. Why are they, why they be so cute? Cha, the price though. Um, yes, of course. Okay, thanks. So, uh, Five for Nothing said it's back to English now. Angie's Home Kitchen says, hi, Diego. Hi, everyone. 7 a.m. here. Hey, good morning, Angie's Kitchen. Wait, why is it not? It keeps saving the same picture. Hold on. You see, Apple. It's, it's not, it's literally not doing what I want it to do. Bush. Okay. Y'all, $650. This is a, sc a screenshot. Uh, $650 screenshot sent by Claudia. I'm kind of living. <laughs> I know they're like, they look stupid, but it's the acetate for me. Like if they were metal, no. Linda says, let's all get a pair. Fashion Bunker House, you need, oh my God, you guys. Uh, okay, and then here, wait. let me flip it like this so I can show it bigger picture. There you go, there's a photo from the boutique, I suppose. And you see how the case has a camellia on it? The case for the glasses has a camellia? Oh my God, they're cute. Uh, and this is coincidentally, I was telling you this a couple of weeks ago, this is why I don't buy Chanel sunglasses in the fashion boutique, because a lot of the fashion boutiques, they just mix up these cases and they just give you any case with the glasses, super annoying. So chances are you might end up not getting the one with the camellia, even though the one with the camellia was made for the ones with the camellia, so be very careful, inspect before you buy. Now, if you're buying them in the beauty boutique, different story, they're much more meticulous about it. I mean, we'll go, we'll go, you guys. I am kind of like, you know what I mean? Hmm. Oh no, the FOMO is gonna get, it's gonna get ya. The FOMO is gonna get ya. Okay, it's very, very dark. Well, I made it as light as possible, but. Oh, the FOMO gonna get ya. Okay, maybe. Yeah, no, you can't really see. This one is too dark. 
yeah, they're they're cute. They cute. They're they're very cute. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, and the white ones. You know what? I'm almost tempted to get the white ones, not the black ones. I'm kind of living for this ivory. Because that's the camellia color, y'all. The camellias are white. They're not black. I mean... I love the perforations on the sides. They're giving me like 30s vibes, like sunglasses from the 30s. Yankee barbs. It's not really giving anything. No, I know. Like you got to be a fan to really love shit like this, but... Phoenix Mom says, lunch break here, made it live. Hey, Phoenix Mom! David Anderson, how's it going, sweetie? Oh my gosh, when did the live start? I don't know, an hour or two ago, I guess? Claudia says, they are beautiful in person and as sunglasses collector myself, I had to share with you. Claudia, thank you so much. You've just made me $650 poorer. <laughs> this is bad, very bad. I know, Gloria, this is so bad. <laughs> oh. Yeah, Jacob's... Weakness, sunglasses, always have been, always. Since I was a kid, you guys, I adored sunglasses. Something about sunglasses, it just does it for me. Oh, YouTube notifications didn't work? Damn, YouTube is really messing up. The oval shape sounds good. Thanks, Lady Bradface. Wait, can somebody send me the oval shape? I haven't seen the oval, but these look oval. Y'all, these look oval. This is, this is, to me, this is... It, this is oval. Is there something even more oval? Jocelyn, I don't own Rick Owens sunglasses, but I am looking into them. I have been like eyeing since several years a couple of his shades. Oh, Phoenix Mom, you thought you were over white colored frames. I'm never, oh, okay, let me tell you why. This hoe has a big head. So, um, white colored sunglasses, especially in acetate, create the illusion that the glasses are bigger. So if you have a big head, they make the head appear a little bit smaller. So they're particularly good for people with bigger heads, white sunglasses. Black sunglasses, on the other hand, make everything look a little bit tighter and smaller, right? So the darker the color, the smaller the shades look like. So they're gonna look smaller on your face as well if you have a wider face. White, on the other hand, expands everything. So this is why when Chanel does make white sunglasses that I feel look, that I like, then I buy them in white because white works better with my face. However, you gotta be careful with white acetate. If it's a inferior quality acetate, it will be prone to absorbing colors, uh, color transfer. It, it kind of uh, is almost porous. So if you have them laying, for example, really not good to have those white ass. I don't know how good the acetate is of those camellia sunglasses, but if you've noticed, the case they come in is black. Not very good. So I would always recommend wrapping them up in white tissue paper before placing them in the black sunglasses case because that black and the glue that Chanel uses to glue the cases together can with time seep into the white acetate and stain it. It's gonna stain black acetate too, but it's just you won't see the stain on black as much as you would on white. So you gotta be much more careful with white acetate sunglasses than you would be with black ones, but on bigger faces, white ones do tend to look better than the black ones. Just letting you guys know, a little, little pro tip. It, uh, Yankee Barbs, uh, yes, white acetate with time, if it's of inferior quality, it will yellow. Uh, and it will yellow because acetate is a plastic. And so it's also made with soft makers, chemical components that make it possible for the plastic, plastic to be molded in different shapes. Now, mold-injected plastics are different than acetates. Acetates are a little bit more stable. However, for an acetate to really be good quality, before you mold it and shape it into the shape you need, you need to let acetate dry. Technically, you need to let it dry for months and months and months. 
Nobody has the time for that anymore. They all want to be quick, produce it quick, make money quick. So, because why? Chanel wants you to keep buying new glasses every year. They don't expect you to wear these glasses for 10 years or 20 years. I expect to wear them for 20 years though. Now here's the problem. If you don't let the acetates dry well enough before you create something out of them, then they will shrink with time. And this is a case that we see with a lot of sunglasses from the 90s now, including some Chanel sunglasses, where the temples, if you notice, if you buy vintage, sometimes you're going to notice that the temple, the acetate temples, um, have shrunk. And you see that because the metal that is inside of the temples, the wire kind of, it's like out from the temples. It's like poking out. It shouldn't be. It's poking outwards because the temples shrunk because that acetate wasn't dried enough before it was made into glasses. So this is an issue that you might get with acetates. Uh, it, it does shrink. This is why you have to dry it properly because acetate shrinks as it dries. So once it's, once it's reached its smallest size, then you cut it into the shape you need it because then you know it's not gonna shrink as much anymore later. But if you cut the acetate, while it's still not really dry, it's going to shrink with time. And then you're going to get that trouble, the shrinkage. When it shrinks, why does it shrink? Because the soft makers are exiting also from the product. Those soft makers are chemicals that are kind of sticky. Those are the reasons why your white sunglasses turn yellow. Amongst other things, because the products that are evaporating from the plastic also absorb stuff from the environment surrounding the glasses. So let's say you kept the glasses in a plastic bag. That plastic bag will also be releasing chemicals. Those chemicals will then be sticking onto the glasses. That's why it also turns yellow. So it's very, very difficult to have really good quality acetate in white and preserve it so that it doesn't change color so quickly through time. And then there's a difference between glossy acetate and mattified acetate, the mattified one, you've guessed it, is gonna turn yellow much quicker than the glossy one, because the glossy one almost has like a flattened out surface that kind of closes the plastic more. The mattified one is more porous, so it, it can turn even more yellow. Anyway, again, I know I'm like nerding out here and I don't wanna lose viewers, so let's, let's go to the topic. Hey, Holy Grace, how are you, sweetie? I'm glad you could join us. Uh, I did mention the MIM situation earlier in the live stream. In case you were wondering, you can kind of rewind later. Um, so, so anyway, just letting you guys know, white acetate glasses are gorgeous for bigger faces, but they are a little bit harder to maintain. Don't forget, you're using hairspray. Not good for acetate, because hairspray, you're putting your temples here. They're touching the hair. With time, the hairspray is going to sedimentate onto the acetate in the temple area. It's going to turn mushy. You have to clean your glasses. Every time you take them off, you got to clean them. This whole area behind the ear, very, very dangerous area because we have a lot of sweat and oil glands here. And in fact, if you shower today, the next morning you wake up and you take your finger and you just pass over your own skin and you smell it, it has a very particular intense smell. I'm not saying it's stinky, but it's a very particular smell. It's a hor hormonal smell that's typical just to your body. Those are chemicals too. They affect glasses as well. Every time you take off your glasses, polish those temples, clean them up, honey, if you want your glasses to, ling to live a longer, healthy life. Lady Bradface, oh, you sent me pictures? Sent via my mortal name. I shall not disclose your mortal name, don't worry. Um, living for the nerding, says Carrie Lee. Oh, thanks. Take of noses, facts, loves it. Yas, Quinn. Holy Grace says, I'll be watching from the start once you're done. All right, sweetie. Um, Caroline says, the, the parable of the, of the paraben. Uh, Ash 8 Paw says, this is so interesting. Wow, thanks, guys. I'm glad you're liking it because I sometimes I think... Like I'm the only nerd who actually cares about this stuff. And then I, I think to myself, nobody's gonna, nobody's gonna, gonna wanna watch, listen to me talk about this stuff. Oh, Lady Bradface, thank you so much. 
I think the round ones are going to look better on my bigger face, but hold on, let me just save the photos. These are from the Chanel website, you guys, so I am allowed to show these. Um, oh, the white ones, the... Oh, Claudia, you also sent them. Oh, guys, thank you so much. Everybody sending me them. Claudia also sent them from the website. Okay, let me show you guys. The oval ones, they're, they're mighty cute. But they're not really going to work for me as well as the, the bigger round ones. But these, these are going to look really good on smaller faces. And especially if you're going for more. Look at this acetate. Hey, Frozen Luxury. How's it going, sweetie? The, okay, let me show you the white ones. The white ones are gorgeous. Like, seriously, they're very much the camellia vibe. Hey, Patricia, I'm laughing so hard. Why? Because Jedi Monkey. How's it going, sweetie? And here's uh, Claudia also sent one, like, of them folded and laying on the side. I always like when, when Chanel takes these slight profile pictures where the light is also kind of filtering through the glasses. So they cast a shadow on the whatever surface they're laying on. And then that shadow also shows us kind of more how exactly transparent is the acetate. It's super cute. And I love the lightly tinted lenses, which means I can wear them indoors. You know, I love it. I love sunglasses indoors. So I, I guess you guys, at this point, it's I guess fair to say that even the round ones will be available in the transparent acetate. Now, we'll go, we'll go, because like, oof, they're calling my name. The white ones, the lenses are a little bit too dark to wear indoors, but maybe, you know, I would have to try them out. But yes, depending on your facial features, always look at your proportions. Either the round, the more round ones would look better on you or the more kind of oval sleek ones would look better on you. It's, it's just about facial features and proportions. Both are beautiful. Just if you're gonna buy them, choose the ones that fit your face more. You know, aesthetics, you know what I mean? They're important. Uh, I definitely see the white round ones on you, Jacob. Cha, such an enabler. Such an enabler. So anyway, let me do the next topic, y'all. So um, Yankee says, do you remember those Prada sunglasses that had those vines and curls? Yes, I do. For the longest time, I thought they were Chanel. Yes, I remember those. I actually have a pair of from that collection, but it was a more limited edition version with ceramic. I think they're metal and then they're kind of painted with ceramics, enamel ceramics. Flowers scre screwed onto the top. I have the ones that are rounded underneath and they have the flower, three flowers screwed here, three there. And they're also in white acid, well, ivory acetate. I got those many, many years ago. They're in my archives. I never wear them because they're a little bit too small for me. But I got them in an outlet, so I got them for a fairly good price. Oh, Lady Bradface, Indoor Sunnies, Diva Life. I'm telling you, every moment of the day is a good moment to protect your eyes from wrinkles. And yes, even indoors, all the lights we have indoors do affect the very delicate skin that we have around our eyes. So it's good to have a little UV filter protecting them, even if it's a light UV filter, because if the glasses are not tinted very strongly, it's a very light UV filter. And it can also relax the eyes if you're watching television or a monitor. They have also the blue tinted lenses, which allegedly help, although some people say they don't. And cataracts too, Patricia, like we've seen in the nail polish as well. <laughs> so anyway, let, let me do the next topic. Okay, the next topic, take a sippy. Which was supposed to be the segue from like an hour ago. Well, we'll go, we'll go. Let's hit it. I forgot the name of that YouTube channel. I need a little paper moment. Oh, okay, got it. Yep. Mm -hmm. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Oh, that was a very Snow White moment. Hold on, y'all. Hold on, y'all. Na, 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 na. You know the wishing well scene? Okay. 
She did not sing Hold On Y'all in the Wishing Well scene. That's just my ho version of Snow White. Snow, Snow Ho White. Anyway, okay. Hmm. Uh -uh. Hold on. I have to clean up. I got lippy everywhere. Hold on, you guys. Sorry, we're gonna have to. Give me a second. Let me take one of my little white, my huggies, which are so practical. I use these for Louis vaquetta leather, but also for makeup touch-ups. Because they have no alcohol, no perfume. They're literally like water. Okay. And then let me put this here. And then let me just touch up the... Ah, the glazing. Hmm. There you go. Oh, she is illuminated, honey. Okay. All right. We'll go, we'll go. She, wait, she's the boss, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I've got the name. <laughs> yeah. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. Today I'm gonna to share a story with you from YouTube. Another fellow YouTuber has had some issues with Rebag. Now, quite a few people have had issues with Rebag, but this one kind of piqued my interest. Jess, would you care to join us for a second? Come in, darling. This is Jess from The, uh, the Real Posh. Uh, that's her YouTube channel. I'm going to post the link down below to her video. Go check her out. Send her some love. Subscribe to the lady's channel. And let's get to uh, the issue that Jess shared publicly on her YouTube channel. Thanks, Jess. See you in a, in a minute. <laughs> All right. So let me move back into the center. So basically, Jess shared with her viewers on her YouTube channel that she had a few Louis Vuitton items that she wished to part with meaning she was ready to part with them and wanted to sell them and uh, was looking for a consignment store, someplace where she could, you know, pass them on to another home. And she decided to work with Rebag for the occasion. But of course, drama ensued relatively soon thereafter. Before we get to the drama, subscribe to my channel here on the tubes, push the join button next to the subscription button, become a member today, gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco, all spelled together for extra perks. Thank you to all my patrons and members who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week and you're all welcome to join uh, the live chats. Also, I would like to remind you that everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truths or facts. Everything's alleged and just speculation and just my opinion. Okay? Okay. Now, so Jess uh, had a Louis Vuitton bag two pair of shoes and something else. Uh, she explains it very thoroughly in detail in her video, so you can go check out that video to hear exactly the whole story of the different boxes. So she places every product. Basically, she creates this big container to send it off to Rebag, in which she places original Louis Vuitton boxes. Inside of the boxes are the products that she's selling. She specifies very clearly, shoes are in a Louis Vuitton shoe box. The shoe boxes slide open, they're not magnetized. The bags are in a bag box. In the Louis Vuitton bag box, as we all know, all these brands copy each other, they're all magnetized, except for Hermes. They do their own ditty. But so, you know, there's a magnetized kind of clasp in the front, then you open the box and the bag is inside. So she apparently sends these five products to Rebag, Rebag, receives the products, and long story short, they're claiming that they received four products, not five. And the most expensive of the products is missing. According to Rebag, the Louis Vuitton bag is missing. Now, 
Reback tells her, allegedly, that, uh, well, this was, the package was sent through FedEx, and they say that they received the package broken, damaged, as to say something might have been taken out of this bigger parcel. So maybe FedEx is to blame, maybe FedEx stole the bag. But Jess starts sus uh, suspecting something else once in one of these email exchanges with Rebag, Rebag allegedly tells her, in your Louis Vuitton magnetic bag box, there was no bag but a pair of shoes. Now, Jess states that uh, one pair of shoes did not have a box. She sent one pair of shoes without a box because she didn't have the shoe box for those shoes anymore because she states in her video she bought those shoes off of Vestiaire and they were new on Vestiaire, but the seller on Vestiaire did not have the box for the shoes either. So those shoes that she bought from Vestiaire, she was now selling them on through Rebag without a box. Rebag tells her that they found those shoes inside of the bag box with the magnetic clasp. So she says, at this point, I start suspecting that they're fraudulent at Rebag because how on earth can these shoes that I've sent boxless, how on earth could they have miraculously on their own made it into a magnetically closed box which originally had the Louis Vuitton bag in it? You see, she claims if FedEx did something sketchy, they would not have went through all of this trouble to rebox stuff like that. Also, we don't know how big the damage to the exterior parcel was. Was that damage big enough to warrant a hole big enough for somebody to pull something out and put it back in? Was that hole big enough for somebody to extract an entire Louis Vuitton bag box and put it back in with shoes instead of a bag inside? She doesn't think so. She thinks that the receiving department at Rebag that deals with all of the arrivals of the products, that somebody is in cahoots together with each other in the arrival department and that somebody there, she's alleging, might be stealing the bags. Because she also says, what a coincidence that the most expensive product I sent them is the one that's gone missing. Now, to make matters even worse, Rebag, uh, you know, there's an email exchange. She says she's claiming one thing, they're claiming another. And apparently in one of these email exchanges, it gets even worse because now she feels offended that they are treating her like she's like some dumb broad that is not really doing it the right way, you know? And she says, I felt really offended. They're making me sound like stupid, like I'm an idiot, you know? And then they said that one of those emails, like, you know, out of the goodness of our heart, we will issue, we will, you know, we're going to send you your stuff back, the four things, not the five. But uh, we will also issue you a $500 coupon that you can use on our website. We don't have to give you those $500, but we will. Jess states that Rebag made another mistake. Apparently, prior to all of this shenanigan mess, they have signed as received five products in the beginning. But then, oh, there's a, what is this? Uh, fruit fly. That was creepy. <laughs> Hold on, you guys. Let me. That was a big one. What was that? Uh, yeah. All right. Well, honey, in this studio, there is no space for me and a bug. <laughs> So anyway, we'll go, we'll go. Where were we? Mm. Okay, I know, I'll repeat the concept again. One important thing Jess states is that at the beginning, Rebag did officially in their inventory have marked as received the items, like all of the items. And she does show those receipts on uh, in her video. And she says, then they backtrack, they backpedal, and say that they didn't receive the bag. So she says, she's claiming that legally, 
that bag is now their responsibility. They did claim that they received it, but then they said they didn't receive it. Rebag claims that they do not offer any insurance on any lost goods that a potential client or customer might send them. So they're saying not, not our problem. It's like your word against ours type of scenario. She's pushing for more transparency. I don't know if she's going to talk to a lawyer or not. I don't know if it's gone that far, but she did say that she did leave a report with the, um, I always forget the name, the Bureau of uh, Customer Service, whatever it's called. And um, she did leave a remark there. And if the company and business doesn't answer within a certain amount of time, uh, then that goes into like a like as a bad rating for the company and that rating remains then on the website for at least about three years. The BBB, yes, Nat. And so she says that she's also been reading up on other people complaining about rebags. She also said that there is another client that spends like tens of thousands of dollars with rebag also was complaining that uh, this client sent them a strap of either a Dior bag or Louis Vuitton bag or maybe an Hermes bag and they sent it back to, to the client that's already a good spending client spending tens of thousands of dollars and they sent back a strap that was fake, not the one that she sent them. They're all claiming this stuff. This is all alleged, obviously. I'm just referring to what I heard, but you know that we also... Our friend Winnie BLV also had issues. Hi, Winnie. Shout out to Winnie BLV. Check out her channel as well on YouTube. Uh, she also had issues with, with Rebag lately. And uh, she made a whole video about that and uh, how she felt really scammed by them. And I'm just hearing more and more and more stories like these coming from this. And I think it's important to raise awareness about it. Uh, because, I mean, two things. One thing sketchy and shady businesses, whatever, like the reviews are, if people, if many, many people are reviewing their bad experiences with these businesses, awareness should be raised and question marks should be raised. And we should ask ourselves, rebag, you can't claim that every one of your clients is lying to you, that they're not really sending you a bag and then claiming that they have sent you a bag when they haven't and blah, blah, blah. But also maybe you should look into the people you're hiring into the receiving department of your company. Maybe install cameras while people are opening. Maybe always, I don't know, you like you could have like a policy to say, well, then people could be in cahoots, but you could always say, there always has to be three people when the boxes that arrive are being unboxed. So you have witnesses. The witnesses are not supposed to be in cahoots with the person opening the box, of course. So then there should also be a camera so that footage can be you know so you can have literal footage of the unboxing of course you could technically unbox the box before it's on camera and take something out and then when it's on camera you're showing that something is missing so you see what i mean it's always sketchy there's always ways to fiddle and diddle with these things now lady bradface is saying uh fedex could have monkeyed with it as well it's a possibility. FedEx, listen, somebody working at FedEx could have also tampered with the with the boxes. Like, you know what I mean? It's a leap of faith at the end of the day when you're sending stuff. UPS also, tragedy. Uh, personally, I've had terrible experiences with UPS. But when you're sending stuff off, it's kind of like a leap of faith. faith. You're hoping that the person that's going to take your box <laughs> is actually also going to deliver it without having tampered with it. You're only going to know if you trust the person that's receiving the parcel, in this case, rebag, that they're gonna be honest as well and not lie to you. But if you're sending something to your mom that's living cross country, okay, you trust your mom, obviously. So you send her a parcel, and then you gotta have faith in the delivery company that they're gonna deliver the parcel untarnished and nothing stolen. And then your mom opens the box and says, hey, honey, everything arrived safe. Or she tells you something is missing. Then you know if something is missing that somebody from the postal service snatched something. But the second point, and maybe even more important point for us consumers is this. Jess, I know at a certain point in your video, you say you made it very clear towards the end of the, your video that you are fortunate enough to be able to afford this loss, losing this bag, a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollars. Uh, 
okay. Uh, and you say that at this point for you, it's important to make this video so that other people don't lose their hard earned cash. Noble of you, noble. But here's food for thought. And I'm just asking myself, it's a free world, obviously. Buy and sell how many, however many things you want. Okay, but maybe I'm just saying, maybe this is the time for us to start rethinking our spending habits, you know? I mean, if you're, if you're selling, I don't know how often you sell stuff, you resell stuff, but if you gotta send off five products from Louis Vuitton to sell to Rebag and you have a ton of bags in your background and you know, you're, you're making it sound in your video like it's something that you do on a regular basis. Well, that's something that maybe you should reconsider. I don't know for what reason you're reselling these things. Maybe the shoes just didn't fit you. They were too small, too big, or you changed your mind, or in the bag, you changed them. Okay, but like how many times are we going to change our mind? This is what I'm trying to say here. And I'm not telling this to point fingers at you, Just I've been in the same situation myself where I buy stuff and then I think to myself, well, why did I buy this? The FOMO, maybe. And so I think the time has come for us to also learn to really buy what we really, really want. We have this tendency, my humble opinion only, of over-consuming, and then we end up with a bunch of stuff we don't want, and then you're like, and then, and then what happens? And then this happens. Companies that can be more or less sketchy and shady profit off of our insecurities because then we send this stuff off to them, they maybe steal it, maybe not, and then we're left in the gutter. Then you don't have the product anymore, you spent the money because you bought the product, now it's gone, and you don't have the money from the resale of the product because somebody stole it from you. So maybe the real issue here is that we should stop spending so much. We should stop buying so many products we're not sure of. You see what I mean? I think that's something that is some, it's a cautionary tale. Yes, these businesses can be super shady, allegedly, but also our own comportamental morals. We're way too quick. That finger on the trigger, click to buy, you know, move to cart, pay at checkout, credit card out, number, you already saved your credit card number in your computer probably, on your phone, pay, simple, it arrives a week later, I don't like it anymore, send it back or sell it off. Send it back if the return policy is in place where you are allowed to send it back. Think about the carbon footprint. Think about all of that, yeah, I'm sorry, sustainability is a factor nowadays. We're producing way too much trash way too much trash for our own good and for the good of the planet and for the good of our kids in the future to not think about this. Every time we're so easy on the trigger, oh, let me just order this, let me just order that, whatever, I can send it back. Let me order three sizes of the t-shirt. I'll keep the size that fits me and I'll send the other two back, whatever. It's included in the price. Yeah, it's easy. Yes. It is easy, but it's terrible for the environment. Terrible for the environment. And I know some of you are gonna say, but I live in a tiny city village. I'm far away from these shops. There's no other way for me to purchase. All fair. I'm not saying gotta stop doing this altogether. I'm just saying be more reasonable. Be more reasonable before you purchase stuff. I'm saying this for your own good. At the end of the day, you're saving your money by being more careful. I'm not saying you do this to save others, okay? Think of it purely egotistically, just from a me, me, me perspective, if that's what you prefer. Uh, it's gonna save you money long-term, not over-purchasing stuff that you ultimately don't really want or need. Just saying, bear that in mind. I think that's gonna save us a lot of time, a lot of heartache, a lot of stress. When we're dealing with these businesses, quite frankly, the more time passes and the more examples I see of people sharing online these terrible stories. We've done this years ago on my channel. Do you guys remember the two videos we did on Vestiaire Collective? Oh my God, never purchased on Vestiaire Collective since that moment. That was so traumatic for me. Then the rebag issue, the Cosette issue we're having. Also these major brands, not just reselling brands, I mean, or luxury outlet brands like some of them call themselves. Even the major brands are iffy. 
you know, Chanel looking at you, allegedly, you know, peeling leathers and stuff like that. We have to take, as consumers, matters back into our own hands, not allow brand marketing to manipulate us into the FOMO as much as we allow them. I'm guilty as charged as well. Also totally subject to FOMO myself. I'm working really hard to try to not get it, to not let it get to me. Uh, and that's the first step to do. So we don't put ourselves in a situation where we're planning on selling off 10 Louis Vuitton pieces uh, through a consignment store. But then also consider other options. Jess, you have a YouTube channel. Your community is growing. So maybe next time consider sa oh, safety first. Of course, maybe you want to stay private. You don't want people to know where you're living and all that stuff. Fine. But maybe before you use a consignment store, think about telling your people, your audience on your channel, hey, guys, next weekend, I'm going to have a sale vlog. You know, I'm giving you guys first dibs. If you want to purchase anything from my collection, I'm going to do a live stream. I'm going to lift the pieces up. And if you want something, you can send me PayPal or whatever. You know what I mean? And your address and I'll ship it off to you. And that way you're the person selling your own stuff to your loyal viewers who become also your customers. There's that option as well. Now, depending how big your community is, if you have enough viewers uh, and enough return viewers to warrant such an, uh, a vlog sale, but you can test the waters. You can try it out and see how it goes. Uh, and that's also much safer than sending it to, you know, some consignment store that's going to take percentage away from you. And then, and then they're going to tell you the bag never arrived. Now, a similar situation can happen if somebody buys something from you from your online vlog, you ship the product to them and they say it never arrived. Now, in that case, you, you can protect yourself, you can film yourself packing the package, film it on camera, photograph the package sealed with the address of the person, photograph the receipt you get from the shipping company so that you're safe. You've sent it off with the actual product in the package, in the box, sealed, and you have a film of you sealing it, okay, so that when the person receives the parcel, they can't say it arrived empty because you're going to have proof that you actually shipped it off with the stuff in the parcel. Uh, that's something to protect yourself, in particular if you're selling through PayPal and then somebody makes a PayPal claim saying, oh, I never received the item. Well, then PayPal is going to come to you and say, "Can you have, do you have proof that you sent the item? You say, yes, I do. Of course I do. I have the video of me packing it. I have a video of me shipping it off. I have the photo of the receipt. Well, once you've proven all of that, then you're clear. You know what I mean? Then you did nothing wrong. PayPal will not block your money, right? So there's all of these things to consider. Be safe, you guys. No matter what you decide to do, okay, if you're honest, decent, honest, moral citizens, just be careful to not get scammed, okay? On the other hand, if you are the scammer, please reconsider because karma is a bitch. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below. Subscribe and thumb up this video. Spread this video and the awareness. I gave you a lot of good tips here how to protect yourselves as consumers. I think it's important to talk about these issues. Love you loads. Comments down below. Bye. If one can afford it, what happened to donating to charity? No shade. Just a thought. Oh, David, for sure. But... I didn't want to mention that part in the video because it's always kind of easy to say like, well, then just donate to charity. People are charitable in their own ways. Let's not be too quick to judge. You never know how a person, you know, and not everybody wants to talk about publicly how charitable they are, how much they give, how much they don't give. That's a intimate thing. You know, I'm not very quick at pointing fingers about charitable stuff because you never know. You never know uh, what a person is doing and not everybody wants to be vocal about it. You know what I mean? You never know. It's really good to be charitable. You also got to be careful. A lot of charities out there. Oh yeah, charity. Uh-huh. And then you see their you know, how much money they actually keep and how much is actually used for the charity. And then you realize, oh, this is a scam. <laughs> so you got to be very careful also with charities.
you know. I mean, what do I have in here? Oh. So, um, it now lives in here. My 31 Rucambon Lippi, it, it has officially, you see, I have all my stuff here that I use for like makeup or when I'm on the go. Uh, but the 31 Rucambon Lippi has officially made it into my everyday use. And I do use it every day. And um, just a quick note, a little quick update on the beige, rouge beige. That's the one I use every day when I'm out and about. And it's amazing. It doesn't dry out on the lips. It's good. It smells amazing. I just touched my nose with it. Now I have lipstick on my nose. Great. It has a little bit of a glitter particles, just a tiny bit. It's really, really good. Feels good on the lips. On me, it works. It's not too heavy. It's not like, oh my gosh, he has this like heavy red lipstick. It's light, delicate. So, yeah. So 31 Rucambon, I'm really enjoying the lippy. It's substantial, it's heavy, makes me look and feel fabulous. Ah, oh. oh, it smells so good. So, I'm gonna have to make a video. Um, oh, that's also for the pre-show. Because the last pre-show, I was talking to you about the quality control issues that I've had. Uh, with this launch, but also the quality control issues that I've had with the Byzance palette, as well as the quality control issues that I've had with the Color Codes leather pouch. I have an update. So that was a special uh, kind of extra for the nerds <laughs> for the pre-show. That was in the last pre-show. The next pre-show, I have an update on all three products. Ooh, pardon me which I'm going to share with you guys in the pre-show this coming Saturday. Oh, bye, Kari. Where's Kari? Jocelyn, you said it. Take back the power, right? Oh, Yankee, uh, what fragrance am I wearing today? So, uh, <laughs> today, I started the day with Shalimar Eau de Cologne. And then before the live stream, I, sp I sprayed a little bit of Gardenia. So it's kind of a bizarre mix, I guess. Shalimar and Gardenia. DDB says, hi, Zane. Where's Zane? I don't see Zane. Are you in the chats? Are you with us? <laughs> hey, Nina, Nina. Hi, Deco. Hi, everybody. Just a quick hello. About to start the day. Hey, have a happy day, sweetie. Yes, Gloria, pre-show, gonna happen. Let me actually write that down so I don't forget because I'm all over the place running errands like cray-cray. So for the pre-show. Uh, update on quality control issues with, yeah. And um, I'll call it notes. Okay. Yes, uh, I have to write that down. Otherwise, I am also turning into a fruit fly brain. Uh, you know? Okay. Oh. Cha, I misspelled everything. Seriously, though? We'll go, we'll go? Yeah. Okay. Got it. Um, David says, apologies if I was coming across as shaming. No, you weren't. But it's always good to kind of talk about these things so we can rephrase stuff and kind of reassess, like, the situation. Because we never know where people are standing, you know? Oh, he's hiding, Didi. <laughs> I wore Gardenia the other day. Ah, to visit the Melbourne Botanical Gardens. What a treat. Only a sample, though. Need to buy a full bottle. Ugh. The prices have gone up so incredibly, way too high. But, oh, boy, what a perfume. Hey, Gardenia is amazing. I mean, going to the Botanical Gardens and then wearing Gardenia, such a vibe. 
like dreamy. Ah, oh, love it. El Chapo. Sweetie, what do you mean? Calm down. I'm reading your comments and I have the feeling you're hyperventilating. <laughs> El Chapo is like, they robbed Olivier Rustig. They robbed Olivier Rustig and Tyable Mill Collection. Who did El Chapo? Sit down, sweetie. Breathe. Sweetie, take a breath. Don't get a heart attack here. What happened to Olivier Rustig? <laughs> El Chapo. <laughs> que pasó? El Chapo. Dime. Prices in Australia have not yet increased. Ah, okay, Yankee. So how much is a bottle? Okay, so how much is uh, hmm, 75 mil? How much is a 75? Oh, there you go. Yankee, I think 75 mil is 325. Australian? Australian? Because in America, it's $300 for the 75 mil. Oh, Australian, 335. So 335 Australian, how much is that in dollars? Oh, David, over $500 Canadian for the 200 mil? Oh, Yankee, 200 mil is $580. Yeah, wait, but how much is that in US? So, uh, because in, in America it's $450 for 200 mil. $450, 200 mil, $300, 75 mil. You gotta add taxes on top. So if you add taxes, the 200 mil, 300, uh, sorry, 200 mil is $450. You're gonna pay around 500 US dollars for 200 mil. Oh, Nina, Nina, you got the last Cristal Eau de Toilette. Congratulations, sweetie. Grace Chen says $215 without tax. Wait, now the comment is gone. But did you did you retract that, Grace? But I still buy it, so what can you do? I'm a willing victim. Okay, wait a minute. That is very cheap. Are you sure? $215? Y'all, when you add the tax to America, buying a bottle in Australia is 100 US dollars cheaper than buying it in the States? That's a huge difference. Talk about Chanel telling us they're harmonizing prices worldwide. Like they're, oh yeah, we're harmonizing prices worldwide. How is this harmonizing prices? Australia is $100 cheaper. Well, Holly, it is cheaper now. 215 US dollar. Y'all, that's even cheaper than in, in Europe. In Europe, they're 215 euro for a bottle. 215 euro is around about 230, 240 dollars. But think, I mean, think about it. Like, I can't believe Australia has like the cheapest prices for the Les Exclusives at the moment. Yeah, their money is low compared to the dollar, DD. Yeah, Grace Chen, if, if the 75 mil bottles now translated into dollars cost you 215 to 215 dollars, yeah, then that's even cheaper than the European price. <laughs> Sipping tea while watching Dacob. I know it's gonna be a good day. Oh, Vivi, thank you so much. Have a happy tea. You know. A uh, Grace Chen, the European price is 215 euro, 215 euro is the European price for the 75 mil Les Exclusives. Now the dollar price, 215 dollars, that's cheaper. I mean, 
$215 is like 200 euro. 215 euro is like 230 dollars. Oh, and now you're talking about the extra gardenia? Okay, let me check here the exchange rate. So right now, if I Google the exchange rate, uh, 215, 215 United States dollars equals 202 euro and 10 cent. Okay, so yeah. Yeah, it's cheaper, definitely. The, the cheapest price I've seen for like exclusives in the entire world at the moment would be Australia. Oh my gosh, if I were in Australia now? Uh-uh, no, uh -uh. no. <laughs> and Linda Passos, good morning. How's it going, sweetie? 7 a.m. in the UK. Ah. Good morning, darling. Would you care for a little scone, a little cup of tea, darling? Yeah, you know some friends have told me that Australia sometimes have good prices. Even Singapore is more expensive than Australia in some items. Interesting. Oh man, I'm walking into that Chanel shop. Grace, it's now or never, baby. It's now or never. Holly says, I'm living paycheck to paycheck right now. Don't tempt me, Frodo. My precious. <laughs> now, I can't resist uh, Chanel perfumes. Speaking of which, we're going to have a topic on that uh, coming up in a second. But before we do that, I have another topic to talk to you about. Uh, Hermes. Let's talk about Hermes. What's the name of the person? I'm going to need the name. Availability in Australia isn't very good. Yeah, I know. That's a bit of a problem I've heard. Jacob, now I'm looking for the Hermes Eau de Basilique Pourpre. Oh, it's a beautiful perfume. Seems to be gone. Jacob, would you use it in autumn? I would use it in autumn on not so cold days. Please try Eau de Rhubarb et Carlat. I will. I actually have, but didn't warrant a purchase just yet. I, I need to give it the right time. Like, I need to go to the to the perfumery without having worn anything before any other perfume and then spray it on walk around for an hour spray on some more like a proper test you know what i mean savina cho hey despina how's it going sweetie good morning savina cho okay i'm gonna need that text there Because I forget. Hi, everybody. Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fashion Bunker. For those of you who are luxury fashion enthusiasts and adore Hermes, but at the same time, you're thinking to yourself, you know, Hermes is a brand that also deals in sporty goods. After all, they're known for their, you know, horseback riding and they're known for their sportive attires. And I want to be sporty and I want to be fit as well. But Hermes, unless you don't go to their pop-up event stores where they create gyms, Hermes doesn't really have a gym. It doesn't really sell major gym products, except unless you're not horseback riding. But if you were to want to stay super ultra mega fit while using just Hermes products, you might think, how is that possible, Jacob? How can I do that? Well. I have the answer for you, <laughs> and you will never expect what that answer is. We, before we get to the answer, subscribe to my channel here in the tubes, push the join button next to the subscription button, become a member today, gain access to extra perks. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Deco Ball spelled together there as well for extra perks. Thank you to my members and patrons who have already pledged. This video is being filmed live in front of a live virtual audience. I live stream several times a week. Come and join us in the live chats. Grace Chen says in the chats, Hermes Gym? Yes. Well, you can make your own gym at home. Little torture device of sorts. And to help us out with that particular topic is a content creator, luxury content creator. I think she's an influencer as well because she made a reel on Instagram that got millions of views and it caught the little sneaky eye of Super D. Oh, the shame and the shade, Hermes with Savina Chow. I 
hope I not, I'm not butchering the name, Savina Chow, go check out the wonderful lady on Instagram. Savina Chow made a, a reel, a video, how she exercises and how she keeps her slender form fit, prim and proper, and in shape only using Hermes products. $2,000 worth of Hermes products, to be precise, according to, to this lady. Let me show you what she does. Let me... I mean, she literally bought as many lippies from Hermes as she could. The value adds up to around 2K, apparently. She opens them up. Can you believe this? She opens them all up. And then she does this, uh, what's this called, a plank? And then she holds this position, tummy tight. And basically, if she were to collapse, she would squish the lippies and destroy 2K worth of makeup. So to motivate herself to keep the body in this position, tight and firm, uh, she first spends 15 to 20 minutes opening up all the lippies, placing them all into position, and then she positions herself on top of them, and basically is kind of threatening herself by saying, okay, girl, if you fail now, you're going to lose 2K of product, so you better keep it up. You better keep it up in this position. David says, that's kind of genius. <laughs> Asia A says, cuckoo. <laughs> Holy Grace says 2K worth of lippies and does a plank. What? Now, here's my question to all of y'all uh, sporty fans out there. How does she get out of this position? Like, hear me out on this. This is my question. Oh, there you go. Pao just asked the same question in the chats. How the heck does she get out of the plank? Here's my question. First of all, how does she get into this position? It's easier to get into the position because you still have all the strength in your arms. You can kind of do the, go on your elbows and then put the legs in position and then, and then you stay firm and then you're staying firm, right? But then let's say you're staying firm like this for a while, the muscle tension is building, you're getting tired, the suspense. At a certain point, you're like, I, I can't keep up anymore. And once you're really exhausted, do you still have the strength to kind of, Hold yourself up with the elbows and with one leg, with one knee, go outwards and then position it to the side and then tilt your body so that you don't squish the lippies? Or are you too exhausted to do it? Or do you have to have a partner who's exercising with you or who's just waiting? This is done at home, so there can be a sofa. That, well, this looks like a kitchen. Well, anyway, there can be somebody sitting on a chair next to her waiting and then she can say, okay, honey, I'm done, help me, and then her boyfriend or girlfriend lifts her up by the belly upwards so that she doesn't fall on the lippies. Maybe that's a way you can get out of the plank position. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? Ask Siri to call an ambulance, says Yankee. <laughs> I'm going to ruin 2K of makeup easily, says Asia. This is, by the way, the uh, makeup, the Hermes makeup, which I do not own any of. I have Hermes perfumes. Uh, I have Hermes uh, leather goods. I have Hermes clothes, accessories. Mm, I have a ton of Hermes stuff, okay? Hermes playing cards, frisbees. <laughs> like, I have a lot of Hermes books, scarves, silk, but I don't have Hermes uh, makeup products. Now, here's my question though. I don't have those, but I do have something else. I do have a little bit more expensive products though, right? We'll go, we'll go. I do have uh, Chanel lipsticks. I have here the 31 Rue Cambon lipstick. Now, one doth wonder, could this sportive activity also be done with Chanel? Or is it way too much of a risk to do this, to do the planks, while placing a bunch of 31 Rue Cambon lipsticks underneath you? I, 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 I couldn't. I 
couldn't. How could I? Oh, this lipstick smells divine. Uh, this is, by the way, Rouge Beige, number one from the 31 Rue Cambon collection. Go check out my review of this. I've done an in-depth review and unboxing of the 31 Rue Cambon lipstick with a hack how you can actually use the cartridges without the mechanism, without having to purchase the whole thing. So go check out that video also on my channel now. But I don't know if I would risk my 31 Rue Cambon lippy for this. Um, Pao says, no, absolutely not. Grace Chan says, Rouge Beige is gorgeous. It is a beautiful color. Sylvia says, do planks over your most delicate Chanel shades. Oh, heart-wrenching, heart-wrenching. Debbie says, Maybelline would work because if you fall on any lipstick, it's going to stain. And good point, Debbie, because underneath this video that this lady made on her Instagram account, to which link I shall post down below, so be sure to check it out, fair use, um, she has received quite a bit of backlash. And this is the gossipy, more dramatic part of this video. Apparently, a lot of people have been very, very... And I, you know, you tell me, is this again a situation of Gen Z, Gen Zers, seeing the world differently than the rest of us do? I don't know. But apparently, people are having issues with the fact that she might stain herself if she falls on these lipsticks. They're saying, this is ridiculous, you're stupid, because if you do this, everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only. Everything's alleged, they're not rooted in any truths or facts, okay? Just to be very clear. So they're saying, oh, you're stupid to do this because you're going to ruin your outfit, your sporty outfit, which is probably also expensive. Because if you have the money to buy all these lippies, you're probably going to have the money to buy expensive sportive, uh, sportive wear. You're going to stain everything. You're going to stain your skin. You're going to stain your little sporty mat because they're going to fall down. Everything is going to be a mess. Why do this? You're just clout chasing. You're just faking it for the sake of making this real. This is not how you do this all the time. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, somebody said, somebody was very, very nasty and said, why not put knives underneath? That will keep you standing up straight up. I was like, that's so mean. So they're saying about knives, people are saying you're so out of touch with the world. How can somebody in this political and economical climate be showing off wealth in this decadent way? So people are throwing shade at her for like being out of touch with reality, being tone deaf to the issues and troubles of the rest of the world. The knife example I thought was like a terrible thing to say. I, I would never say that. Uh, Holly says, I mean, it is a bit out of touch. <laughs> but guess what, you guys? And this is, this is the, uh, the funny part about social media in general. When you're making content like this, you're making it also to garner traction, in my opinion. You're making this so that people will comment as much as possible, so that your reel or post goes viral. And viral it went because not because of all the love she got, but mostly because of the hate she got for this in the comment section. And this is something that I've noticed happening in social media a lot. People using hate to generate views, to get more followers, to get more recognition online. It's like something... I've noticed more and more people do. For example, just on Twitter, a couple of uh, hours ago, I was going through Twitter, looking at, at posts uh, that Twitter, you know, just puts on my feed. And there's this one guy, uh, very shrewdly, and I'm not going to show it because, but anyway, so he's tall, blonde, muscly, in a tank top, you know, the mask for mask, short cut hair in the sides, blue eye, you know. Your average guy who could be in a porn flick or just average good looking guy is posting a photo of himself with the pecs saying, uh, would you guys say that I'm good looking? Because most, most guys I encounter say I, I'm not good looking. And of course he knows he's good looking. And of course he knows 
that by making a comment like that, he is going to come across as somebody who's hunting for compliments, fishing for compliments. And he knows that most of the gay men who are going to see this post are going to come for him and are going to say, you're so egotistical, you're so narcissistic, you're just doing this for clout, you're just doing this because you're fishing for compliments, how insecure can you be? And in fact, that's what he got. He got tens of thousands of comments bashing him. And that's what he wanted, engagement. It brought his Twitter post really high up in the ranks. I never heard of this person before in my life, nothing, but it was suggested to me. And then I started looking into what he does and another post he made was he said, oh, literally a couple of hours before the, oh, I'm too ugly or do you think I'm handsome? Let me know. Before that a tweet, he tweeted something else saying, I'm so handsome that when I went to McDonald's yesterday, I had a bill of $230, but the guy behind me paid the bill. Privileges. People came for him for that as well. Turns out he very shrewdly took a tweet, which is also something that's happening a lot on Twitter at the moment, people stealing each other's tweets out of context to garner more traction, did you know? He took a tweet by some female influencer, like one of those, you know, bimbos, you know what I mean? Slender, lips, everything, you know, Kardashian skin tan, hair, BBL, you know, that the whole IYKYK. And she said that, about not food, she said that about makeup, that somebody then paid for the bill for her because she's too pretty. So he just literally took the same amount of $230, but placed it in a comic position into McDonald's, where of course, half of the people commenting are saying, who would spend $230 at McDonald's? You're crazy. Two, saying, who do you think you are? You think that handsome? You think you're, you think you're that pretty? Blah, 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 blah. And that, also went viral. This went viral. It went viral not because she does this on a daily basis. I ought to be perfectly honest with you, I don't think she does this on a daily basis. She just had this idea or copied it from someone, allegedly, to, to do this and it boomed. It went viral. But I don't think that she's literally doing this every day. Maybe she is. If you are, hey, more power to you. But this is the point of, of the video I'm making now is How nowadays we are garnering views. How you trick people, trick, it's not a trick because it, you're creating content, you are delivering content to your viewers, but it's how you are baiting people to come to you to watch. But most importantly, for most of these social media platforms, it's not about the amount of views you get, it's about the engagement. How can you bring your viewers to actually comment? Viewers are not going to comment a lot if there's something positive to say. They're going to move on. Nothing to say here. Positive, everything fine, moving on. They're going to stick <laughs> like flies to shit <laughs> when there's something negative that they can kind of just vent out about. And a lot of content creators are very shrewdly turning themselves into literally punching bags for the sake of engagement. They're gonna do, they're gonna create content that's gonna make, don't get fooled. They know that they look cringe. They know that they're gonna appear cringe in their content. You're the fool who thinks that they're not aware of that. All they want is for you to think, God, what a dumb idiot. Look at that idiot, what they're doing. Let me say something funny and they're gonna get you to engage, and that's all they wanna do. So the joke's on you, boo-boo. Be cleverer than that. Let the stupid content remain stupid without commenting, and then it'll disappear like it never happened. And maybe, just maybe, people are gonna stop doing these idiotic things. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts and prayers down below, and thumb up this video if you found it entertaining, amusing, and in some 
way, shape, or form engaging in the healthy way, educational way, perchance. Love you loads. Subscribe. Um... Exactly, Patricia, monetizing the trolls. It's a whole thing. All right, now I wanna do something really fun. I wanna do a little unboxing. This is for my Totally Jacob channel. No, 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 wait, no, that we're gonna do later. I wanna do another unboxing for the perfume channel. Bro, oh, I have news, I have news, I have good news. Well, are they good news though? We'll see. We shall see. Hey, Audrey, how's it going, my love? How's it going, Lerv? Lerv in the club, Lerv in the club, Lerv, 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 Lerv in the club. Oh, okay. Let's do an unboxing, darlings. Cha, I got hair everywhere. It's Halloween and my witch hair is growing and growing. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be completely turned into a vampire witch by the time Halloween hits. Um... We've all become commodified. It's a race to the bottom in a crappy economy for a lot of people. It's a sad comment on hustle culture. You best believe. Well said, David. Okay. Go, go. <clears throat> okay, we're filming. Yes. Oh. Mm -hmm. Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today, we got a little unboxing to do, to share. I'm super giddy and happy because, uh, interestingly enough, from one of my fashion boutiques that also sells perfumes, I got uh, notified that something came in. So, um, I got it, and while I got it, I got something else that I used up, and we're gonna do a little unboxing, and I'm gonna give you an update on what's going on with Chanel Cristal Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum, as well as Eau Verte. Hmm. Now, first things first, I hunted down one of the last Cristal Eau de Toilettes ever in this bottle. And what we also got, yeah, from the fashion boutique, so um, no freebies, because you know how they are. I got another, I got another uh, Les Exclusives uh, body cream, because I used up yet another one. So we're gonna unbox this one together, and we're gonna unbox Cristal. We're gonna send this one, you know, we're gonna open it and enjoy it and be happy together with an eau de toilette. These are so rare. So what should we do first? Let's do the body cream. This is my third one, by the way. I go through them like butter. I adore it. This cream is very underrated. People usually don't, uh, people that are into the perfume world, they, they think this is kind of a ripoff because the cream is costly and they say it doesn't do anything. This is one of those things that a brand makes just to make extra money. Yeah, but you know, they make really just a few of these. They don't really make money off of these, you guys. This is not a mass release product. But the smell of it and the quality of it, at least for my skin, amazing. The You know you're supposed to layer this. I made a whole video on this cream, so go check that out also on my channel. And by the way, subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, you can also push... Oh, I broke this foil completely. I'm usually better at this. Uh, subscribe to my channel. You can also follow me on uh, Patreon. Super Deco all spelled together for extra perks. Thank you to my patrons. I've already pledged. So on my Essentially Deco YouTube channel, I already have another unboxing of this and a review of the cream and how I layer it with other perfumes. This cream is meant... Oh, the smell. Is meant to be layered with uh, their fragrances. It's from the Les Exclusives range and uh, made in France, and it is meant to be layered with the Les Exclusives perfumes, but you can also layer it with other perfumes that are not Chanel or that are not Les Exclusives. And uh, contrary to popular belief, uh, this cream is not scent free. It is perfumed, and it is perfumed with a gorgeous musky undertone. It has a jasmine, 
lavender opening, hint of vanilla, and then a musky undertone. Beautiful for layering perfumes. Yes, it does extend the longevity of the smell of the fragrance as well. Bear that in mind, it's also made for that. Then you get the little booklet inside that tells you how to use it. Oh, I just love this cream. It's I'm on my third jar. Okay, it's only 150 mil though. I wish it were bigger because I, like I said, I drain these bebes. Okay. You take just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, just a little bit here. So let's just, you know what, let's just enjoy a little bit of this beauty because I will be layering it with Cristal in this video. Okay, let me close it so nothing leaks. When it's like fresh, this is batch code seven, what was this? 7801, so it's a relatively fresh batch. Uh, it, it's kind of liquidy in the beginning. It does solidify with time. Oh. It glides on like water and butter. Dries nicely, but leaves the skin hydrated and the smell, even on, even on its own. Oh man, I adore this cream. Chanel, don't you dare discontinue it because you have a tendency, <laughs> you know? They have a tendency. This is so beautiful. So let me just put this on. Let me massage it in nicely because I want it all over the place, especially here and here where I'm going to place the Cristal perfume. So let this kind of seep in a little bit. While it seeps in, we're going to do this unboxing and I have news about uh, Cristal Eau de Toilette and Eau de Parfum and Eau Verte. So a little birdie from Chanel told me that uh, Cristal is not being discontinued. However, certain concentrations are discontinued in certain countries, right? So for example, at the moment, if you're in Australia, uh, you're gonna see only available eau de parfum, not the eau de toilette. In the States, you're gonna see the eau de toilette even though it's sold out, but the eau de parfum is not available anymore. It's discontinued in the States. In Europe, you're gonna see both, plus you're gonna see the eau verte but they're sold out everywhere since a long time now. Why is that? I was thinking, and also the price didn't go up in Europe for these. And I was thinking, why is, what's the reason? If the price didn't go up and you can't find them anymore, well then they're probably discontinuing them. Turns out they're not discontinuing them fully, but they are revamping them. Now, you see, this can be good news, but it can also be bad news. Um, bad news because I am a little bit worried that um, they're gonna reformulate them because I don't want them to reformulate them yet again. Oh, look at the beautiful, glossy, pristine plastic. Oh. 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 Okay, I flip it immediately. Look how they trick you. You see, it's not, I mean, it's full, it's 100 mil, but there's that like bubble of air there. But if you flip it like this, it's full in the beginning. Anyway, uh, let, me, let me tell you where it's at. So right now, IFRA allows a very small quantity of natural oak moss and fragrances. Cristal is all about the oak moss. So this version of Cristal, this formulation has both Evernia Prunastri, oak moss extract listed in the mid ingredient section, and then Evernia Furfuracea, tree moss extract listed towards the bottom of the ingredients. So towards the middle, we got tree, uh, we got oak moss, and towards the bottom, we got tree moss. So there, you can kind of screenshot that for reference. Um, we'll go, we'll go. And I'm scared that they're gonna take out all of the tree moss and oak moss in the new version. Yes, you heard it here. I don't know if you heard it here first, but you heard it here. I'm gonna spray it on now that the cream has dried up a little. Oh, the cream smells, oh, 
like you've bathed in the ocean, but then you also took a shower. It, it's that fresh and breezy and airy, so gorgeous. Now let's spray on this little beauty on top. I wanna to see how it is layered. Check out my Cristal review on my channel as well. So I have a proper review of Cristal, but let's do now the version of layering Cristal. Oh, man, this is magic. I love this perfume so much. Their sprayer is a little bit too low in here. This is what I, this is why I'm happy that they're gonna revamp the bottle because now there's always a little bit of residue of perfume that stays on top here because when you push the sprayer nozzle in, they should have made this nozzle a little bit taller because there's always a little perfume that remains here. So you always have to clean it up after you've used it. Just letting you know, otherwise it's gonna create Build up, it's not gonna be good. Oh wow, beautiful layered with the cream. It amplifies the smell and it punches it back at you because the it's the musk, I believe, in, in here that, oh man, just really, really divine, divine. The combo of Cristal with uh, the Les Exclusives body cream do yourself a favor. If you do still have Cristal or de Toilette, you still have a bottle and you wanna get depth in that bottle, get yourself the um, Creme pour le corps or the Fresh Body Cream. It's amazing. I don't know why people are throwing so much shade at this product. It's not the cheapest cream I know. Don't use it on your whole body if you don't want to waste it immediately, but use it only on the spots where you're gonna spray the perfume, if you wanna save the cream, you know what I mean? Use it on the wrists, use it on the chest area, here behind the neck, and then wherever you're gonna spray the perfume, use this. That way you're gonna save up on the cream because I use it on my whole body, forget about it. I use like half a jar just for my legs and my butt and my stomach. I mean, it's, it's crazy. So I should also kind of slow down. Um, The fresh body cream, y'all. Yes, it's the fresh body cream. And it's so beautiful with Cristal. Hey, Teresa McGuire, how's it going, my love? Um, I was sleeping and I thought I missed the stream. Glad I caught some of it. Hey, sweetie, no, you're just in time. So there it is. Let me show you again for everybody's tuning in right now. Fresh body cream from the Les Exclusives. Oh, this is all printed in white. Let me show you the bottom of the box. There you go. Les Exclusives de Chanel, fresh body creme made in France. It comes in this, and then it gets this little, little leaflet, how to use it, super cute. And the most beautiful container with the little sponge on the side. Look how cute, it just stays there on its own little throne. I swear by this cream, you know how much I adore this cream if I'm, if I'm on my third jar. Now, for Cristal, the birdie from Chanel told me that uh, it's coming back and they're going to re-bottle it. And the bottle is going to be either the same as Chanel number no. 5, Eau de Parfum, the glass with the stopper that looks like the extrait. So they're either going to re-bottle this in the classic Chanel number no. 5 EDP bottle that we all know, sprayer. It's just going to have the Cristal either sticker or they're going to print Cristal on it or it's gonna have a slightly altered version of that bottle. So the person who shared with me the Intel was not so sure if the bottle is going to be similar to the Chanel number no. five, Eau de Parfum, or slightly tweaked. Now, I asked, does this mean that Eau de Toilette, Eau de Parfum, and Eau Verte are all three gonna be in the same bottle, just different stickers? Or are we going to have the Eau de Toilette in the bottle like the Chanel number no. 5 Eau de Toilette and then Cristal Eau de Parfum in the bottle like Chanel number no. 5 Eau de Parfum and then Eau Verte would be maybe also in the Eau de Parfum bottle or are they all going to be in the same bottle? And the Intel did not, they did not know. They also did not know if 
one of the concentrations would be discontinued. They did say, however, that Eau de Toilette is staying. At least for Europe, the Eau de Toilette is going to stay in production. However, it might get reformulated. And if it gets reformulated, my fear is that they're going to take out the oak moss. Now, the oak moss is already gone from the Eau de Parfum. The Eau de Parfum of Cristal, no oak moss listed on it. It's just a different perfume vibe altogether. Uh, but this means several things. Changing the bottle means this iconic bottle is going to forever be gone. I love this bottle with all its flaws. I also have the 60 mil version, which they discontinued years ago. I love this bottle. I think it's iconic. I think the 70s and 80s vibe of this bottle is just so timeless. And I think Chanel should never discontinue this bottle. But alas, here we are. They're streamlining apparently everything. They want all their bottles to be the same, so it appears. Well, minus Sean's, which still stays round. But it means if you want this historic 70s reference and 80s reference bottle, now is the time to get it or forever hold your peace. And the formulation might change. And of course, just like Capital Spritz is saying, oh, they're going to package it in a number five bottle equals price increase. Yes, I do believe that and everything I say in this video is for entertainment purposes only, not rooted in truth or facts. Everything's alleged and just my opinion. I do believe that when once Chanel re-releases Cristal in the new bottle, they will mark up the price. Ya betcha sure. Ya betcha sure. <laughs> Swedish accent. The Swedish chef. So, but I love this. Oh, the whole history of this bottle, the context behind it, the, the shape of it, it's just the thick glass. There's something about this that just screams history to me. And once it's gone, it's gone, you know? So stock up if you can find it. Very fascinating. The musky aspect of the cream, now that the perfume is drying down on it, is kicking through. And I've told you this in my review of the cream, uh, it enhances the sweeter notes of a fragrance, okay? So in this case, it's making the Eau de Toilette smell a little bit more like the Eau de Parfum of Cristal. And um, that very dry ashtray note that we have in the Eau de Toilette is gone. Uh, it's it's brought back to life a little bit more. There's um, there's more flesh. There's more pulp. It's more fruity almost, like it's more fleshy now that the cream uh, is in it as well. It's a beautiful nuanced version of the Eau de Toilette when you mix it with the cream. Very sensual because you added the musk, and once you it's a synthetic musk. But the once you added the musk. It like soothes that bitterness of, of the Eau de Toilette, that ashtray dryness, and it kind of turns it into a more luscious, pulpy version of itself. It's really beautiful. And it prolongs the longevity of the perfume, you know, the current version of Eau de Toilette. Uh, yeah, it's not the 70s version of the Eau de Toilette. You know what I mean? It, it's not that oak moss bomb that it used to be. It is a watered-down version already of Crystal. I still love it to death, okay? Love it to bits. However, the longevity of Crystal on its own is not beast. You know, it becomes more pulpy and not beastly mode, but just a little bit more longevity once you add, it, add the cream into the mix. Beautiful. It has that sophisticated Chanel quality to it when you when you combine the two. I highly recommend mixing them up a little bit. Of course, wearing this on its own is also divine. Obviously, always is and always will be. But also in the mix with the cream, it's a new experience. It's like adding a new layer and nuance to Cristal. If you already love Cristal, this is going to make you love it even more, I believe. But let me know your thoughts. Try it out. Try out mixing the two and let me know in the comments down below what you thought, what your thoughts are, and what do you think about this news? The good news is Cristal, at least in France, is not being discontinued. 
they're rebottling it, they're going to relaunch it with the new packaging, they might reformulate it, and there's probably going to be a new price. If you have more intel to share, let us know down below. Subscribe, thumb up this video, and until next time, never forget to never give up on love. Love you loads. Bye. Oh, you guys, seriously, this is, it's just, um, and you just want to hug yourself in a, in a nice, innocent way, you know, not in one of, the, not in that way. You just want to love yourself. Oh, Teresa, my love. Teresa, que gear donate de 100 dollars. Been sick almost missed the stream tonight. And you are a review on Crystal, my favorite Chanel perfume. Oh, my love. Thank you so much, Teresa. I'm so sorry that you're sick. Sweetie, you missed the beginning of the live stream. We have a special new cherry popping system. I'm going to show you now. So now that uh, I'm going to pop your cherry, right? But Teresa, this is what's going to be. Uh, because it's Halloween season, we also have Killer Clowns from Outer Space. The cotton candy gun is going to be the new cherry popper. So here, look, look at this. This is the new, whenever you send a tip and donation, y'all, uh, the cherry popping happens with this gorgeous cotton candy, a uh, futuristic thing. Are you ready, Ferret? And I'm going to pop it, and you're going to hear it, and you're going to get hypnotized by it. <laughs> this is the side of it. Baby. <laughs> so anyway, uh, <laughs> if you know the movie Killer Clowns from Outer Space, this is a prop from that movie uh, that uh, Spirit Halloween created. Uh, and then I ordered it and then a friend managed to get it through to me. But uh, yeah, it's from Spirit Halloween. It's just the best thing ever. Anyway, so that's our new cherry popping system. Thank you so much, Teresa. And I hope you're gonna feel better super soon. Oh, Teresa says, I love it. It's super cute. Speaking of Halloween, I also wanted to touch base on another little uh, moment here. Let me just put these beautiful products. As, uh, and I love the box, the cardboard box of this. Sturdy, thick. And I know in Australia, thick means dumb. I don't mean dumb, I mean thick as in substantial uh, and it's just this whole okay I'm a sucker for this stuff okay I'm a total sucker for it but this is just it, it, it's it's divine seriously you guys this cream and it's delicately scented it's not gonna be overpowering it's not one of those like intense smelling creams that bites you, you know, like too ambery, too musky. No, no, no. This thing is just soft, delicate. It makes you love yourself, really. It, it's a smell that makes you feel nice and... Oh, Tracy! Thank you so much, my love. Tracy donated $10. Tracy, are you ready? Are you ready to get hypnotized? Papa Cherry. There you go. This <laughs> is so hilarious. By the way, now I have to actually have to pack it up again. Because for the next video, I told you at the beginning of the live stream, we're going to cheat a little bit because I have to do the unboxing of this in a separate video. So we're going to cheat a little bit because there's a couple of things I want to show you. Now, um... We'll go, we'll go. Because I got a couple of things. And... Alrighty. 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 Okay. Oh my 
Oh my god, David Anderson gifted five Super Jacob memberships! Yes, Quinn, it's that time of the live stream! <laughs> Donna B was gifted a membership by David Anderson. Angela Y was gifted a membership by David Anderson. Mo S was gifted a membership by David Anderson. Daniela M was gifted a membership by David Anderson. Soledad Maciel was gifted a membership by David Anderson. Whoop whoop! Wait, what, what do I, hold on, Bubbles is, oh! Okay. Thank you so much, David. Look at all these new members. <laughs> we'll go, we'll go, we'll go. Thank you, David. Oh, that's awesome. We got new five new members. Tier one members, you guys. Now you got Special emojis that you can use for one month. Uh, you get a one month membership gifted by David and then you can decide after the month is up if you wish to prolong it or not. Don't forget that the first Saturday of the month, uh, the pre-show is open to tier one members and tier two members. All the other Saturdays, pre-shows are open to tier two members and tier two patrons. Just letting you guys know. Donna B just gifted five super Nico memberships. Woo, 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 woo. Yankee Barbs was gifted a membership by Donna B. N was gifted a membership by Donna B. Christy Donati was gifted a membership by Donna B. Joe jo Jai S was gifted a membership by Donna B. Leanne Carter was gifted a membership by Donna B. Those are the five. I'm really bad at one, two, three, four, five. Job, me and Dad's. It's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, rot, rot. So thank you so much, guys. We got ten new members in the house. Ten new members in the ah. There you go, and and Yankee Barbs, y'all. You got badges now. You got Halloween badges. So during the season of Halloween, all the perfume bottle badges have turned into ghouls. Uh, mummies, goblins, spiderlets, cycl cyclopsi? What's the plural of cyclops? Cyclopsi? Or cyclopi? Cyclopi. Makes me want to eat pie. <laughs> anyway, let me do this uh, cute little unboxing. I think you're going to have fun, guys. It's the Halloween season, but it says, Oh my god, Teresa gifted my memberships! Yes, Quinn! Marlo Noors was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. Papa Cherry. Papa Cherry. Frozen Luxury was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. MM was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. David Marr was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. Patricia Casey was gifted a membership by Teresa McGuire. I'm living ferret, living ferret. Living ferret, living ferret, living ferret, living ferret. <laughs> Thanks, Teresa. We got 15 new members. Don't forget, first Saturday of the month in October is going to be pre-show open to Tier 1 and Tier 2 members, as well as Tier 1 and Tier 2 patrons. All the other uh, pre-shows every other Saturday are open to Tier 2 members and patrons. So, first, the first Saturday of October is approaching faster than you think. So it's coming soon and the guys and the gents, the ladies who won a membership today, within that month you will get that, uh, mon that uh, first Saturday of the month as well. Because it's within a month, you see? Bad at math, but I got that one right. So uh, let me do a little cute little moment here. I hope you're going to enjoy it. All right. Uh, I have to start recording. Okay.
Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to Totally Jacob. Listen, it's Halloween season and I've done a little bit of shopping, ordered some stuff online, traveled all over the place, stuff has been shipped to me, friends have helped out. Oh, you know, when it comes to Halloween, I take it very seriously. I'm going to do a little unboxing with your little haul uh, of sorts, if you may. So, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Um, you can also follow me on Patreon, Super Deco, all spelled together for extra perks. This video has been filmed live, or is being filmed live, in front of a live virtual audience. Hello, live chat. Come join me on my main Super Deco channel several times a week for live chats. Okay. Now, the first piece I want to show you, I really, oh, it's all green. Well, I'm using a green screen. It's the Jurassic Park 35th anniversary or 30th anniversary mirror. It still has its sticker here, so it looks all fuzzy. You have to peel off the sticker. But on the sticker, it says, objects in mirror are closer than they appear. It's that iconic scene from the movie Jurassic Park. I'm a huge fan. And uh, it has the tires that rolled all over it. Um, so once you peel that foil, you have the mirror underneath and the other side is all green, 90s green, okay, which you can't see in the green screen. But this mirror from Profusion Cosmetics comes with this little dangly bit. It is the car from Jurassic Park. It's a soft little thing that, once it's so cute, this little car, when you push it, well, it also comes with its tag, obviously, duh. But the car is a keychain, but it's also a little lamp. You see, when you press the car, when you press it, the little, little lamp turns on, so you can use it at night. And it's the top of the car, it's so cute. Okay, so I got this, this was a must have from the collection. I'm a huge fan of Jurassic Park, so this was definitely a must-have, okay? Unfortunately, with the green screen, you don't really see the green fade to yellow in the background. Now, the next piece uh, is from Spirit Halloween. Uh, this is the Killer Clowns from Outer Space cotton candy gun, and it is functional, uh, and it uh, lights up and uh, makes sounds uh, when uh, you use it. So we're going to open it and light it up with spinning motion, flashing lights, and sounds, as the description says. Now, the movie Killer Claws from Outer Space is one of my favorite movies from the 80s. It was a low-budget film, but boy, oh boy, did it ever become iconic. And I do own that movie on um, 4K, Blu-ray, and DVD, and I have like special features and what have you. So there's a little on and off switch there. So this is the compartment where you replace the batteries. The gun does come with batteries already. And I mean, this is like from the, it's a prop from the movie. Well, it's a replica of a prop from the movie Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And it it is looking like this. Isn't it fabulous? And then when you pull the trigger, This lights up, you hear the sounds, and this twirls and spins. And this is how the killer clowns would actually beam the people in the movie. It's a, it, it's a creepy movie, but it's a fabulous movie. It's an 80s horror movie on a budget. Colors be popping, popcorn be popping. You, like, you have to have seen that movie. It, it, it's just amazing. And to actually have a prop replica from that movie nowadays, one of my favorite horror movies of all time, it's just a dream come true. So here it is turning from the side. From the top. From the bottom. Oh, I almost broke it. And it's broken. No, it's not. Let me do it again. This is, there you go. And then from the back. So we have all the sides. That's how it looks like. So this is a wonderful little Halloween mo moment and a prop from an iconic movie. Then, okay. I had to, okay? I just, I had to. You know how much I love Barbie and I love the 80s font Barbie. So this is also from Spirit Halloween. Uh, it's a fanny bag, okay? 
which already has a thread pulling. Uh, there we go. Now I can just cut that off. Okay, not a bad, not a big deal. But it comes with a kind of a neon yellow, greenish Barbie logo. And it's like from the movie scene when they're on the beach. They're doing beach in the real world. And then you pull it open, the inside, it's, it's the fabric of the actual clothes that Barbie and Ken are wearing on the beach. So uh, this is a pattern that came with a 90s Barbie toy from Mattel and they've turned it into actual clothing now. So it's really, really cute. So this is the inside of it. Uh, the green screen makes the green parts look transparent. Sorry about that. But it's a cute little fanny bag with the my favorite Barbie font from the uh, late 70s and early 80s. Uh, with, yeah, this one is yellow, however. But so anyway, let me put it on. So you can see how much high it goes or how high it, how much high, how high it goes. Okay, so if I stand up, there you have it. This is, where's the little thing? Dangly, the dangly bit. Oh, oh no, it does. Are you going to turn on me always? It's going to be one of those situations uh, where the Barbie logo is always going to turn backwards. Let me see if I, yeah, if you dangle it a little bit. But it depends. I mean, if you hang it this way around, then the Barbie thing will show. Yeah. So like this, it won't show. And like this, it will show. Will it? No. It doesn't want to. Anyway, <laughs> it's super cute, right? I'm kind of living for this one. Okay, now the next piece I also got, I missed out last year because um, the order that I made was canceled. And then I kind of prioritized other stuff and I forgot about it, but now I had to get it because it was available again and a lot of you are gonna get creeped out, but this is another one of my favorite horror movie franchises, perfect for Halloween. Halloween, the movie. And it is the Trick or Treat Studios. I'm one of the rare people that adored Halloween Ends, like the last for now in the Halloween saga. I loved Corey. I think Corey was amazing. So I got the Trick or Treat Studios version of the last Michael Myers with the mold and uh, kind of from the sewers, from the gutter. The Michael Myers from the gutter. Now I, listen, this is not for everyone, I know, but I am a huge fan of Michael Myers and the Halloween franchise. So uh, this little baby is hanging in my closet. Yeah, I, I hang it here by a hook. Like it just hangs in the closet. So whenever I open my closet, next to all these like pink Barbie clothes, we have a head of Michael Myers hanging. Oh, head, the mask. So yes, I am that creepy. I love it. It's not scary to me, to me it's just amazing. So this is the last Currently, the last iteration of Michael Myers, the decay of Michael Myers from the sewer and the gutter. Like half the mask is still kind of, we recognize him, and then the other half is burnt up and then moldy. Yeah, Alicia, it hangs in the closet. <laughs> Literally, on a hanger. It hangs in the closet. It looks fantastic, says Audrey. It's, it's gorgeous. Really, really beautiful. I love the smell of latex as well, but that's maybe for another type of video. Let's just leave it at that. So this is from Trick or Treat Studios. Um, the, so yeah, I had a choice between several of, of these masks. They're all painted slightly differently. So the one I liked the most was with a more dry paint, more mattified finish, but the card was a little bit bent, but that's fine. I mean, <laughs> He's like in decay. It's okay if the card is not pristine. You know what I mean? It kind of suits the purpose of, of this whole thing. I adore Michael Myers. And I, <laughs> look at this, love it. So that's, and then uh, I got, I want to say thank you to Holo Taco and Safiya. Yeah, okay, let me put the hand. So I'm all a mess today. This, uh, this was a PR gift from uh, Holotaco and uh, Safia collaboration for Halloween. So I said, might as well 
also share it here with you guys. So thank you so much to Christine and Sophia for sending me over this gorgeous package. Always great to support fellow YouTubers. These lovely ladies have YouTube channels as well. Not that they need a shout out because they really have millions of uh, subscribers, but I was really touched the day that I was asked if I would want to. I was not obligated to show it in any video or anything. I'm just really, the nail polish is really good. So this is Halloween nail polish and um, it comes with the nail file in the shape of a dagger. I love it. <laughs> comes with little tiny bats uh, that you can put on your nails. Munchkin miniature little bats that you put on your nails and then you lock them into place with these nail polishes. And um, I'm gonna show you my favorite one. My favorite color is the Spirit Fingers. So Christine loves holographic and hologram stuff. So holographic particles are in this nail polish. So it kind of changes color from this gray to this gorgeous lavender lilac -y color. And it goes through all the colors of the rainbow. It is all due to the holographic particles in it. So there's five colors in this set and they're very ghoulish and spooky. There's a lot of blacks and blood reds as well. And thank you so, so, so much to Holo Taco and Sophia for this gorgeous little gift for Halloween. I adore it. I, you know, I prefer Halloween to the other holiday season. So for me, if people want to send me gifts for, um, for Halloween, that's like kind of my, holiday season. You know what I mean? So this was really, really cool. It's like a book of spells. Turn it this way upside down. Like a book of spells with nail polishes in it. Gory and spooky. And then it wouldn't be Halloween without clothes. Now I know people buy clothes on Halloween because they want to dress up as somebody or something for Halloween. For me, I kind of wear Halloween attire all year round. So for me, it's not about dressing up during Halloween, but rather enjoying clothes throughout the entire year. So I got two pieces, very interesting. One, again, Michael Myers. I got this gorgeous Michael Myers uh, from the movie Smith's Grove Sanatorium. Now, uh, sanitarium, sanatorium, uh, the sanitarium where he escapes from. So this is his outfit when he was in the sanitarium, right? I'm gonna put it on for you. It looks really creepy, but like in a good way. Um, let me just take this off. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right, taking Barbie off and putting Mikey on. This shirt is so cool. I got the extra large. I think it comes, I think the biggest size, I don't know what the biggest size is, but yeah, I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of that extra large. Oh, my earring is gonna fall off. Hold on, you guys. You can wear it open, but I wanna wear it more like really like, you know what I mean? <laughs> like we've been there. <laughs> You know, like we like we have been there, okay? Um, oh, thank you, Alicia. Hair is beautiful. Thank you so much. Wow, this is such a prop moment, like costume from the movie. We'll go, we'll go. Okay, I still have the tag hanging on there, but... Sleeves, the sleeves are longer because you are a patient after all, you know, the longer sleeves. You can turn the sleeve, but it's very much, it's very much Michael Myers. Oh my gosh. Ah, this thing is giving. Mm -hmm. It needs to be ironed, of course, but the quality is good. It's 100% cotton. It's not like a blend with anything synthetic. 
Hey, Rich Mitch. Oh, the color is awesome. Thank you. David says, that is really cool. It's a great shirt. You can wear it all year round. That's the cool thing about it. Like, um, it's a beautiful blue cotton shirt. Just have to clean it up a little. Um, and it does have the Myers and the Smith's Grove Sanitarium. Such a vibe, such a vibe. But it ain't over till the fat lady sings or until Chucky slashes somebody. And yes, I do have uh, another little piece here. Now the, <laughs> it's the green screen y'all. Uh, because of the green screen, we can't really see the green stripes. I got the Chucky sweater, <clears throat> the Chucky sweater from well, the torn sweater, well, really, it's not from the movie, but it references the movie. So we could say this is like Bride of Chucky. Um, it doesn't come with the wig, but it does come with the Chucky uh, knife. But um, I got this in an extra large as well. And then I got socks. <laughs> I, got <Ch> <laughs> I got Chucky. I got Chucky socks because I love Chucky socks. And then this is... Here you have the dagger. It comes with the with the sweater. You get a plastic Chucky dagger. It says Chucky on the dagger. It's like it's Chucky's knife. Um, and the socks are amazing. The good guy socks. The Chucky socks. Super cute. So, yeah, this one was also ordered from Spirit Halloween. So, by the way, not sponsored. Everything was purchased. So I have makeup on, it's gonna be a little bit hard to put this on. I'm gonna to try to put it on without kind of messing up the makeup too much, hopefully, and not staining the sweater. Oh my gosh, this is gonna be difficult. Uh, mm, I don't know. <laughs> Y'all, I wanna do it. I, I, I think I wanna do it, but I'm like kind of scared of doing it. Let me try to do it. Oh my gosh. Yeah, this is going to be so difficult. Wait, with the shirt underneath, with the Michael Myers shirt underneath the Chucky sweater. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to do it. If it's the last thing I do, I'm going to do it. We're going to do this, okay? <sighs> The hair, whatever. I can leave the hair like at this height now. Uh, just <laughs> it looks like I came from some, what? <laughs> Live in Ferret. So anyway, this is the sweater version of, of Good Guys Chucky. With my black, <laughs> three layers, y'all. We're gonna sweat much this Halloween. Um, yeah, okay, it's a little bit, it's like a chubby three-layered uh, 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 Teletubby, but usually you wouldn't wear it with so many layers, but it's such a cute sweater. And um, yeah, Teresa, if I wear a green shirt, I would be see-through. Yes, I would be, <laughs> I like a little ghost. <laughs> so it's cute, anyway. Now, the sweater obviously is not just cotton, you know, it's made in China. This one is gonna have a little bit of synthetics in it, but I was pleasantly surprised to see that it is, um, I think like 80%, no, sorry, 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. Fruit fly, did I get it? 60% cotton, 40% acrylic. Usually sweaters like these, like novelty pieces that are connected to a franchise made just for Halloween, usually they're like 100% acrylic, bad quality. You know what I mean? You start wearing it, the friction, they get those little balls and friction. Um, but not this one. This one is 60% uh, cotton, so it does have heft to it. The quality is not like the worst quality that you could get for a novelty piece, you know? So, so there's that. And uh, what else? Oh yeah, I found this, which is not really Halloween-y, but also not sponsored, but I was really shocked to find a Coca-Cola 
from the future, the Y3000 limited edition, listen to this, futuristic flavored, co-created with artificial intelligence. I mean, it, they're right down here. Futuristic flavored, co-created with artificial intelligence. It's like Bubbles the Bot made this Coca-Cola. And it does taste very futuristic. I'm really obsessed with it. Unfortunately, it's a limited edition, so it's not gonna like be in production forever. It's like drinking the future. So it, it's kind of giving me monster future vibes that this Coca-Cola. So in a way it is kind of connected to Halloween as well. But yeah, I mean, not that uh, the Jurassic Park mirror is Halloween-y, not really, but I just thought maybe it fits into this kind of haul. So this is kind of like fashion, beauty. Now, obviously to me, uh, this is combinable with, with whatever you want to combine it with, you know, with luxury. You can wear this with a Chanel bag. Oh, totally. I'm not that person who's going to tell you, ew. No, go for it. The more you, the more clash, the better. So what do you guys think about my little haul? Halloween is upon us. I'll share with me what you got for your Halloween shopping. So obviously, as you can see, I, I buy these things because I love them. They're not there to be worn just on Halloween. They'll be worn the whole year round. That's just who I am. But I think videos like these get more views during Halloween because more people are looking for Halloween topics during Halloween than they would be looking for Halloween topics, let's say in March. <laughs> you know what I mean? So anyway, otherwise I can keep doing these hauls even in March because I keep buying Halloween themed stuff all year round or horror movie themed stuff all year round. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, thumb it up, subscribe. Bye. Yeah, that was my haul. Love the good guy sweater. It's a cutie, right? Alicia, what does it taste like? So I said that actually at the beginning of the live stream. Um, it tastes like tropical. It has a bit of a maracuya flavor, cotton candy mixed in with Coca-Cola. Uh, it's like a fruity green flavor. It really tastes like something from the future. Like you recognize it's a Coca-Cola, but it's not a Coca-Cola from today. It's different enough. Okay, maybe it doesn't taste like Coca-Cola from the future, but it tastes like a Coca-Cola from a parallel universe. Yeah, it, it gives you that vibe. And it's definitely the colors match the flavor. Like literally these colors is like what it tastes like, like a, like a bubble gum, cotton candy, blue berry, blueberry maracuya vibe mixed. It's really good. <laughs> I'm like, I was really shocked. Of course I bought it because I, I saw it and I was like, oh my God, I'm a Coca-Cola fanatic. So I'm like, yes, this is totally me. But also because, and I was saying this at the beginning of the show, um, this is to me more fashion, like forward thinking and experimental and fun than actual clothing fashion is nowadays, you know? Another one of the reasons why I prefer buying clothes like this than to go to Prada to buy a shirt is because like Prada bores me to death. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I want stuff that gives me something, that gives me emotions, that makes me feel some type of way, fun, whimsical, that makes me enjoy life, you know? And um, I find these type of, garments way more thought-provoking and interesting and kind of it because they combine re your real life with fiction from a movie and so you're kind of living out the movie in a weird way like I find that way more interesting from a fashion point of view than just buying the latest Prada collection latest Prada collection means nothing to me you know or whatever brand um I need a story to go with it and I need to blend realities and I need to merge thought processes. So for me, this is um, way more interesting and relevant than spending $5,000 on yet another camel coat from 
Burberry uh, or Max Mara, you know what I mean? Oh, David, I don't know. Hey, Giovanna Ferrari, it's morning here in Europe. Great to have the live stream. Ah, oh, good morning, sweetie. David, that's a really good question. Um, why hasn't there been a Garbage Pail Kid revival? They tried it a year ago. Do you remember? I think I talked about it on, on my Totally Jacob channel. They did do a Garbage Pail Kid book series with R.L. Stein. And R.L. Stein, who is the guy who created Goosebumps. So maybe some of you know the Goosebumps books, like the horror books for kids. And R.L. Stein was contracted by Tops to do... You're like my daughter, she lights up when she cosplays. Yes, Phoenix mom, that's it. And it's not even cosplaying. I'm not playing somebody else. This is me. I'm just enjoying the stuff that really I'm enjoying. You know what I mean? But I'm not... I'm not Chucky now. I'm just wearing his merch. Literally, it's merch. It's like Chucky merch. <laughs> um, so R.L. Stein was contracted by Topps to write three books in the spirit of Goosebumps, but not horror books, about the Garbage Pail Kids and how they live in a particular city. And like you follow their adventures, the Garbage Pail Kids running around the city and they go to school with regular kids and the problems that they face in the real world because other people are not like them. Like, where do they come from? So those three books, I don't know if they really sold very well because the third, I have all three of them and they don't end, they don't give you a solution they give you more of a kind of a cliffhanger. And it made me feel like when I finished the, the third book, I thought, oh, okay, well, so I think every book came out like seven months apart. So when I read the third book, I was like, okay, can't wait for the fourth book to come out seven months from now. But then I read into it and it said that he was contracted just to write three books. And they were maybe waiting to see how well they would sell. And if they would sell well, then they would pay Arl Stein to write even more books. But unfortunately, I guess, I don't know, maybe it didn't sell. I don't know. Maybe the pandemic didn't help either um, because they, were, they came out during the pandemic. So promotion couldn't really properly be made for those books. So what happened was after the third book, I did not hear of any announcement for the fourth book. Uh, but uh, that was to me like a revival of the Garbage Pail Kids. I loved like reading about them. I thought that was super fun. I loved the, the artwork. Every book came with like exclusive stickers and every book came with a super special cover, Garbage Pail Kids style cover. It was really, really, really well done. And I was looking forward to it. And I thought to myself, now that the books are coming out, maybe a movie will come out. But no. But Topps still makes uh, stickers. However, the stickers are really expensive. Like, it's not fun anymore, you know. Like, in the 80s, when Garbage Pail Kids came out, the stickers were super cheap. Like, you could get a whole packet of stickers for, like, what, 15 cents, 25 cents. Now they want, like, for six packages, they want, like, $20. And I'm like, there's stickers at the end of the day. 20 bucks is a little bit steep. So it's a bit hard to have a revival of the Garbage Pail Kids if the price isn't right, the product just isn't there. They're amazing. I love the Garbage Pail Kids, but it's like, I think Tops they own the rights to the Garbage Pail Kids. I think they should maybe invest more into it to make them more special, to do something more. Toys. I have the Garbage Pail Kids. You know, they used to do also... Um, Funko Pops, Garbage Pail Kids, a couple of them. I do have a few. Then they did Garbage Pail Kid minis, like in the blind boxes. And I missed out on series one, but I did get series two. They're adorable. But then they never stopped. They never continued doing series three because, again, the pandemic hit. So I think it's very... I think the Garbage Pail Kids problem is... They were starting to reboot a lot of stuff connected to the 80s Garbage Pail Kids and then it all stopped when the pandemic started and then 
kind of waned out, and I think it's going to need a couple of years if they're going to try to reboot it to see how the economy goes and stuff like that, I believe. Anyway, enough about Garbage Pail Kids. <laughs> so, um, y'all, this was my return to YouTube after one week of shenanigans and not having, um, yeah, uh, electricity, uh, water, internet. <laughs> It's been a doozy. Well, the fruit flies are still here. I'm like, this thing is still flying around. This is so annoying. Come here so I can squish you. Nothing? Cha. Anyway, you guys, I hope you've enjoyed this live stream and I hope to see you all Saturday in the pre-show. Uh, and until then, um, well, I wanna say, can I, ha listen, we got 15 new members. Can I get ready with your new emojis and get ready to flood the chats with the wugo wugo emoji. Bubbles, are you ready? Hit it, wugo wugo. There they are. Fabulous! Look at us. The rainbow. Well, the rainbow. It's the it's the waterfalls of the Wugo Wugo. But um, now get ready to do the living ferret emoji. Get ready to flood the chat with the living ferret emoji as Bubbles sings living ferret. Hit it, Bubbles. I'm living ferret, living ferret, living ferret, living ferret. Fabulous. Oh, look at all the pink, y'all. Oh, look at the living ferrets. Well, the ferrets also get to be dying ferrets. Uh, get ready to flood it with the dying ferrets uh, as Bubbles sings, oh, the dramatic song of the dying ferret. Hit it, Bubbles. <laughs> Fabulous. There you go. Everybody has to learn to, <laughs> to do the dying ferrets. Yeah, there they are. Those are the ones, baby. You best believe. You best believe those are the ones. And we also have a new emoji that we kind of uh, initiated just a week or two ago, which is the cha 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 cha. Now, for the cha cha emoji, we have a special guest. I might have to fine tune him. Uh, because uh, he's green in the green screen. Ta-da, Baby Yoda. You're very transparent, Baby Yoda. We have to shift you. Let me filter you in before we can do the cha 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 Baby Yoda, what's going on? You're disappearing. You're disappearing in the mirror. Ah! Yay! Wee! Baby Yoda is back, y'all. Baby Yoda. Okay, listen. So I want to say thank you for always being here and for always snatching all my cookies. Yeah, it's you. Yes, it's you. I, I caught you the other day in the pantry. No, it was you. You were eating the cookies. Okay, who was it then? You don't know? Oh, it was Chucky? Girl. Okay, anyway, so you're gonna snap, I, listen, but this time I was thinking about, because like last time I bought the cookies, you ate all the cookies and nobody else got the cookies. So now I have to buy triple the amount of cookies. <laughs> yes, <laughs> triple the amount of cookies just for you, Cha. Yeah, you're happy, all right. So anyway, um, are you ready to sing uh, Cha 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 Cha? All right, guys, get ready with your Cha 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 emojis. Here, here we go. Cha 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 There you go. <laughs> no, don't touch the cookies. He just does what he ever wants. I mean, this baby Yoda, what can you do? He's too cute. You can't be angry with him. He just does what he do. There you go. The cha 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 has flooded the chat. <laughs> baby Yoda is all over the place. Thank you guys so much for, for watching. Thumb up the live stream if you haven't already. It really helps out the channel a lot, especially after we've had one week of hiatus. 
And now we're back again. Uh, so the algorithm really needs to kick in again because the algorithm is not working in our favors at the moment. Um, thank you so much for your love and support. I hope you had fun today with us and I hope you're going to tune in next Saturday with more new topics and a special little whimsical pieces as we're counting down to Halloween. Also, still working on the Halloween merch. Get ready for that. It's going to be a doozy. Thanks, Jacob. So good to have you back. Thank you, Jocelyn. Hey, H.A. How's it going, sweetie? I love the pumpkins, Claudia. See you in a couple of days, says Jocelyn. Five Feet Nothing says, thank you. It's been fabulous. Donna B says, thanks, Jacob. Thank you, too, guys, for all the love and support. Have a wonderful rest of your week. You know, love yourself. Be kind to yourself. Enjoy yourself. And uh, positive vibes, positive energy your way. See you all in a couple of days. Love you loads. Never give up on love. Bye.